Good evening, everyone. Here we are once again with the Creative Arts Academy Arts Alive program that we started, I think, in March. Today, we bring to you episode six. Before I introduce the two discussants today, the panelists that we have today, let me tell you a little bit about the Arts Alive program. Project Arts Alive aims to map the journey of the creators and the curators, the challenges, the overcoming, and the expressions henceforth during the time of the pandemic. It proposes to focus on envisioning the possibilities of arts and its agency in the wake of facing these scaring times. When mobility and gathering of people in a space has become subject to menace, even till date, we pause to question the ways in which the arts community would adapt the indefinite new normal. Just now, I was at an international event where uh, you know, I had rendered some poetry and some uh, artist, musician in Netherlands has given music to it. Another artist has created a complete digital exhibition. I was lost in those galleries. And Abanti, my program officer, who's right here to help you technically, was getting excited, and my 10-year-old was getting excited about these galleries where we were roaming around and uh, trying to find our way that this is the new hybrid or this is the new situation. Imagine what will happen when technology meets art more and more every day. I don't know. And we all have different feelings about it. Yesterday, I had Maya Krishna Rao and Keetana Kumar very excited about the technology. But Neelam Mansingh said that that's not for her. You know, it's not her space. So all of us are going to react differently, respond differently and engage with it differently. And that's what we are here for. How are we responding to this new normal? Today, there's a lovely hybrid situation. There's Mahesh and Ricardo Khan together now in New York. And here we are presenting to you uh, technically, bringing everyone together. And my program officer who lives in Chandan Nagar is here with me, sitting in front of me and yet on the screen with me. So these are interesting situations to be in. Arts Alive is about the global health crisis that has resulted in significant decrease of creative production and has made everyone reflect on restructuring methods of performing a performance, observing a performance, and receiving the funds for the same. As the normative and liminal has started working in one hybrid space, the TCA brings to you this webinar series to investigate and analyze the ongoing artistic activity worldwide. The series would look into dialogic intersection of different artistic mediums in the context of different disciplines used to create, curate performances and interventions. Till now, we've had five episodes with Neelam Mansingh Chaudhary, Maestro Bhai Baldeep Singh Ji, Anita Ratnam and Dipankar Banerjee, Chandra Dasan and Lisa Tyler, Renaud, uh, Mahesh Tatani, and Michael Walling. And today we again have Mahesh with us with Ricardo, Ricardo Khan. This series aims to study the process of transition to understand the persistent adaptation taken by the arts and cultural sector within India and in the global context recently to understand, introspect, and find solutions to the changes that we are facing as a community. We have with us today two eminent artists, as I have already introduced the names to you, but I will say it again formally, welcome Mahesh Tatani and Ricardo Khan, uh, who will be sharing their insights as artists about the change in the social, political, cultural scenario. Let me introduce um, Mahesh to you in terms of his work profile and the background that he has. He's quite a legend in India, as we all know. He's one of the playwrights who fills the huge vacuum we have in terms of playwriting in India. And he's been working in theater as a playwright, director, and actor for the past 40 years. His plays 
are performed all over the world and has been translated into many languages. His popular works include Final Solutions, which won the Sahitya Academy Award in 1998, Dance Like a Man, uh, which is Lilith Dubey's production, which has been running for 20 years now, reaching almost a thousand performances soon. His other plays include The Big Fat City, Where Did I Leave My Parda, Gohar, and Snapshots of a Fur with Sunrise. Recently, he directed his own short play, Untouchable, for an international streaming platform starring Roshan Matthew, Jim Sarb, and Pooja Saru. He's the artistic director of Playpen Performing Arts Trust, a group dedicated to new theater writings. And he has playwriting, he has been playwriting, directing, acting in institutions like Columbia University, uh, NSD, uh, University of Malaysia, FTII, DSM, MP School of Drama, that is Madhya Pradesh School of Drama, among others. Welcome, Mahesh, and it's a delight to have you once again at Arts Alive. My pleasure. I'll take this moment to introduce to you Ricardo Khan, who lives in New York, and he will tell you about the place. I've also asked uh, him or requested him to give us a peep outside the window of his room, if he can. <laughs> Ricardo is a director, a writer, and the Tony Award winning artistic director and co-founder of the Crossroads Theatre Company, one of the few African American theatres to rise to national and international prominence as a major professional arts institution. He holds an MFA in acting and directing from Mason Gross School of the Arts and an honorary PhD from Rutgers. He was the producer and director of the opening night ceremonies for the Sim Simpson Simpsonian's National Museum of African American History and Culture, Washington, D.C., and has written the NAACP award winning fly about the Tuskegee Airmen of World War II, and Sachel Page and the Kansas City Swing, among others. Warm welcome to you, Ricardo, and uh, we look forward to hearing your story today evening. Uh, it's very warm here. I don't know what are the temperatures over there. Looking at both of you sitting inside the room, it looks that it's, it's cold. cold. <laughs> it's okay. very cold. How many degrees? How many degrees? Yeah. Um, I don't know. It's uh, uh, six degrees Celsius. Six, right six now. Celsius, yes. Yeah, wow. Yeah. We yeah. can only imagine. Okay, I'm going to imagine while both of you talk. <laughs> so, the way we've created this uh, series, Ricardo, and I'm also sharing this with the audience, it's a relaxed conversation, unlike other one hour quick question answer rounds of webinars that we've been having. It's a serious looking at your work and Mahesh's work, any collaboration that you might have done. And how are you, how are both of you feeling and what are you feeling during these times? How are you looking at your work in future? Um, what are the ideas or thoughts that are there in your mind or questions or challenges or disappointments that are there in your mind so that we can archive it for future generations or as long as this exists, um, maybe create an ebook. We are trying for funding for this. There's hope from some side and we hope there's more hope soon to make an ebook, archive it and finally even publish a book. So depending everything uh, on the funds that we get, but over to you today to have this uh, conversation and uh, give us an insight into your body of work. We are right here to help you technically. And whenever you say, Avanti is going to show you the clips and the pictures that you want to share with your audience. Uh, it is an informal conversation, so I can pop in whenever you want me to. <laughs> over to you, Manish. Thank you. Thank you. Have a wonderful one. And first of all, um, thank you for, for, for having me. Thank you for this opportunity for us to get together, right? Right, it's yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's 10 a.m. New York morning. We, 
we uh, we cherish because yes. you, you know this pandemic has taken up taken away so much of this space just just people sitting together in a room and chatting well the zoom for me uh, it, first of all i'm i'm zoomed out so yeah. it, it, in so many ways some sometimes the zoom is great what i found during the pandemic is that as theater we could be global Mm -hmm. We could involve people from all over the world. And that's a very, that's a positive thing. Yeah. That's such a positive thing. But uh, when we use Zoom to just call and say hi or whatever, it's like, why not just get together? And that's what we did. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And today is a wonderful moment for me, Mahesh, as I said, that my program officer was staying last two nights at my place. Uh, so we have the warmth of being together also in a real All right. space. <laughs> That's Amanda great. This and she's a program officer. And Vivia can also show her face if she wants to our audiences. But over here right. to start the conversation. All right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, you did this already. You yeah, I, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the thing is, you're, you're absolutely right that yeah. sometimes it just gets so comfortable, the fact that you could reach out globally, mm -hmm. um, that it, it's a bit like uh, when texting began, and you had, um, first, it, it was important things that you, you, you could send a message instantly. Yes, but yes. then after a while, it, it was like, you know, you, you're just whiling away the time sending. I know. Uh, going back and your forth, messages. And, and then you get mad at somebody for not texting you right back. Yes. I want to reply now. <laughs> why, why, why are you not replying to me? You know. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it has its uh, sort of, I, I'm, I feel that technology by itself is mm -hmm. uh, is there for it's neutral right yeah. it's what we make of it mm -hmm. that uh, that uh, matters mm -hmm. and i disagree completely that art and technology it's a new relationship mm -hmm. art and technology have always been related always, you can't yeah true. because mm -hmm. if you look at the instances like uh, thousands of years ago it's only when uh, the um, the melding of metals and alloys came about in the Harappan civilization. Mm -hmm. That's when the dancing girl of Mohenjo-daro was mm -hmm. created, right? Mm -hmm. So without that yes, technology, yes, yes. one had wow. it. That's and in Europe, for instance, the uh, uh, you know uh, most artists for a while were painting portraits simply because they had all those paints. Uh, to deal with yes. at the minute the tube was invented mm -hmm. so that the paint became more mobile mm -hmm. then you had landscapes ah. <laughs> you <know? laughs> yes. so uh, you, it's you, true it's yeah, true yeah. technology is is part of who we are and always has been it has yeah uh, but um wow that that i you know i remember quite before the pandemic being in mumbai and hearing that the National Theater was going to be there. And I said, wow, this is great. Only to realize it, it was uh, it, it was a screening, mm -hmm. right? But I, I take away the only now because the screening allows the National to be in Mumbai. That's right. And from Mumbai to be at the National in, in, in the UK. Absolutely. Uh, and, and that had nothing to do with the pandemic. It had to do with using technology to remove the moats, so to speak, in between the people and 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 the work uh, and the Metropolitan Museum. I mean, the Metropolitan Opera, Opera in New yes. York did the same thing. They right. Started. Yeah. And what they found was more and more people were interested in the opera because of that. Absolutely. You know? And I think it's also to do with what we've done with uh, theater spaces. Mm -hmm. uh, it just has this air of exclusivity. Uh, that for mm. a lot of people, they say, I don't want to go to the theater. It's for mm. all those, you know, pretentious types and things. And, mm. you, you know, mm -hmm. people sort of uh, stay away from going to the theater. Yeah. Maybe uh, these digital screenings will help them see that it, it could be something they can relate to. And mm. it's to us mm -hmm. as directors, as, uh, uh, you know, people who are... Uh, uh, running theater spaces mm -hmm. to make it more welcoming yeah. and open. And I think that's a lesson that most of us have learned from the pandemic that we were so earlier, we were so complacent that these are our audiences, these mm. are our regulars, mm -hmm. and we're going to uh, do plays for them. And there was this sort of uh, almost um, a very um, 
complicit, but not in a good sense, uh, a relationship with the audience that, yes, you know, you're on our database, we're going to send out these and you're going to come yeah. and watch our plays. Uh, but and what, what, what happened with Zoom was that suddenly, you, you, you know, anyone could have access, whoever comes to know of, of and it doesn't seem so daunting as well. Yeah, I think we also have, <clears throat> as theater practitioners, a lot to learn from uh, platforms like TikTok. Uh, and, ah. and YouTube, you know, because the it it, it, it because the, the the amount of time you get to be with people has changed. When you look at Twitter, it is limited uh, to a number of words. Your communication. Yeah. If you look at TikTok, it's a similar kind of thing. And uh, what I found when we started Crossroads, without any technology involved to move our product out. The reason we did it was because of that, um, that fractioning that, it, it, that was actually polarizing in terms of the audiences who go to, quote unquote, the theater. So in this country, while we are uh, certainly divided economically and in terms of class, we are very divided in terms of ethnicity and race. Mm -hmm. and, and, and the result of hundreds of years of, of uh, disparity when it comes to being able to afford to go to places like the theater. The, the ticket to the theater has actually allowed a particular theater goer, traditional theater goer to say, well, I know when I go to the theater, I'm amongst this, these people or whatever. So when we got to the 60s and the 70s in this country, a lot was an 80s. It was about, well, let's try to bring people together. Let's try to, uh, you know, to, to diversify our audiences. But what I found was when you talk about we have to be open, open is not enough. We have to also be celebrated. We have to feel like when we walk into a lobby, we're welcome. We're able to be ourselves. We're, 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 we're safe as ourselves. Yes. And that, I find, is our number one challenge right now, pandemic or no pandemic. Uh, they're, they're, the movement in, in this country, the civil rights movement, moved to, to the creation of all of these theaters, you know, the Latino theaters and the African-American theaters and the uh, Pan-African theaters, and in addition to the mainstream theaters who are trying to open up as well. But when we got to the pandemic and it was a pandemic about health but all public health but also about what was going on in the streets in this country uh, the killing of george floyd and breonna taylor uh, those things were calls to action mm -hmm. for everybody and yet the theater was not able to come to the table because mm -hmm. we were closed down mm -hmm. So it resulted in theater on, on TikTok and, and YouTube and Zoom in order to just respond to what is going on outside. That's interesting. Now that you've reopened your theater, mm -hmm. are you seeing works, uh, new works coming out talking about these situations like uh, the George Floyd one yes, yes. or uh, the ones at least that we know of uh, in India, which made international news. I'm yes, sure there yes. are several more yes. uh, violations mm -hmm. uh, uh, that have mm. happened. Mm. Um, so do, do you see that in some way finding its way into a it's reflective theatre? But, but I, I also think that it has also opened up opportunities mm. for, uh, for Black and Brown writers not only for theater, but for television and film. Right. And, and there is a movement in this country called We See You American Theater. And it was uh, created by a number of black and brown and indigenous artists who basically said, look, uh, it's time for you to change. Mm. We see what you're doing. You see, if, if, if February is Black History Month and March is Women's History Month and another is Latino History mm. Month, a lot of times the theater, mainstream theaters here, that, that's what they do then. But then they don't see you for a year. Right. So 
the movement has been a, has been about trying to change that. And for the most part, a lot of the reaction has been positive mm. from theaters here saying, okay, we want to change. We want to change. Hence Broadway of eight plays on Broadway this year, they're all written by, uh, by black and brown uh, writers. Right. That's now. amazing. I saw Hamilton yeah. and I mm-hmm. don't think 10 years ago, I would see something like that on mainstream Broadway yes. stage. No, right? no, no, not, not for that reason. Not as transformative as that was. Right. Yeah. Right. It was because you, you know, our impression of, um, American culture would be something like uh, maybe West Side Story, where you have the Puerto Rican gangs, sure. mm-hmm. street gangs, mm-hmm. and yeah, yeah. you have the gentrified. Uh, well, it's a, yeah. I mean, when you look at West Side Story, or you look at Porgy and Bess, you look at mm-hmm. all of these uh, classics. My favorites, by the way, I love them. But I also have to be aware of the fact that they're not written by the people who it's about. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's what that's the change we're talking about. Mm. It's the origin, the authorship. In India Uh, as well? I mean, well, no, uh, we were talking about your theater because I'm trying to understand uh, how important your work is because Mm -hmm. everyone says that, you you know, like I was talking to Erin and I said, I'm meeting, I'm having this chat with Rick. And she says, oh, he's famous, you know. (laughs) I I said, do you know him? And she just said, he's famous. He's famous. I I will say that going back to Crossroads now, after been away for a while mm. it's a it's different mm. because when when i started crossroads it was about providing opportunities people weren't even listening to the work we were doing mm. at that time uh, black artists were not even on stage they weren't being they're put in the background or whatever, but never really on stage. Mm. If you look at at um, it, you know works from uh, from a, an Indian origin, maybe you'll get a Bollywood show mm-hmm. on, mm. right on Broadway, uh, Broadway or wherever else. Mm-hmm. But no one else is going to produce it, at least back then, because it's too big. There are too many people, right? And and at the end of the day, it comes down to money. Yeah. So there was this, you know, when I would do works in the, in the early days of Crossroads, there was this um, uh, thing that people would say. And a, a, a fellow, a friend of mine who was white, a white producer said, Rick, it's too big, too black. And too, uh, sorry, too, too big, big, too, too black. black. In other words, do a small black show and we'll do it. Oh, I get what you mean. That if it's too big, it can't be black. Is that no, what no, no. Means? It, no, it's too big and it's too black. In other words, it, it's a black, it's a black theme, but we want it to be smaller. Why? Economics. Economics. No, how, I, I'm trying to understand how are the two connected? Too big, too black. It, it's about take. We know that theater is taking risks. Mm-hmm. So if you take a risk, say on Broadway, you know that you put a lot of money into mm. it, and you may or may not recoup that money. Mm. Chances are, if it is an ethnic specific play mm. or musical, it's going to take a longer time to recoup money versus if you do it all versus. Um, uh, a, a Disney show, The Lion King mm. or something like that, you know when tourists come, they're going to go see that show and you're going to get that money back, right. no matter how big it is. But if it is uh, a, a, a Black theme, it's a specific niche audience. Mm. If it is uh, an Indian theme, if it is um, you know, a, 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 a you know, a theme of, of that's anything other than mainstream. Hmm. It's going, they're going to gear it towards a niche audience. And because they do that, they don't want it to be. Big. Okay. You've just made a very sad statement on theater, which is so true of India as well. If you mm. look at theater and film is that the assumption is that I want to be represented in the theater or in films 
through my ethnicity and through my color, right? Whereas I would imagine that theater should take us closer to, to humanity and to transcend those barriers of color, which would mean that you can be big, you can be black, Mm -hmm. or you can be big and you can be brown. Mm -hmm. And we have a, a multiplicity of audiences from different cultures and different ethnic yes. backgrounds yeah. Yeah. coming to see it. Because if we don't break this very simple barrier, what are we doing in the theater? Because this is precisely the trouble we have in India as well, mm -hmm. is that, especially with Bollywood, mm -hmm. uh, that the representation makes a huge difference. So for a very long time, Bollywood has fed the audiences with Punjabi culture, saying that this is Indian culture, mm -hmm. right? And that is what is considered to be mainstream and mm -hmm. that gets absorbed. So you can never be, you can be uh, very big and very Punjabi. Mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. And for a very long time, uh, you had South Indian ethnicities underrepresented. So, which would mean that if it was a big budget film, it couldn't be about South Indians, right? That has changed. So it's the same. <laughs> Excuse me, it's the same thing. It's the same thing. And, it's the same and, thing. And you're saying it's changed, because I think it's changing here. But I was speaking about how it was back then. Right, right. But tell me, how, what makes it change in mm -hmm. India? What makes it change? Is it forced? Uh, no, I think it's in the doing of it. Uh -huh. it. It is definitely in the doing doing of it that mm. you 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 just do it. And uh, yes, uh, theater can be small and big at the same time. So it could be small yes, in yes, terms yes. of finances, but yes. it could be very big in terms of proposition, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And I think that's what we need: the kind of theater which gets done a lot, uh, which would then sensitize and in some way also desensitize audiences to what to expect. For instance, I mean, you, in America, you could see uh, a play by Chekhov, mm -hmm. Anton Chekhov, mm -hmm. and it, uh, audiences don't expect to see Russian uh, actors on stage, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. uh, it is perfectly acceptable to see uh, you know, uh, uh, regular white actors play those roles. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you now you have black actors playing uh, roles that were traditionally played by white course. actors and yeah, things. Yeah. Uh, it's it, it is it it's slow to change, but it does change. I feel that at least in this country, it changes in waves mm -hmm. and, and, and then it comes back. It's almost like a slinky, the toy that goes down. <laughs> it, it, it eventually goes where it's going to go, uh -huh. but not in a direct line. Interesting. Yeah. Right. So, so what happens in this country is it's actually movements and, and issues and, and events that happen that cause the theater to say, oh, and then it moves. And then it relaxes. Hmm. And then maybe 10 years later, it moves again. You see, when I was in school uh, and I went to Rutgers, so I wasn't that far away from New York. And, but I remember at that time, there had to be five or six musicals on Broadway that were all black. Hmm. At the same time, big shows, The Wiz, Ain't misbehaving, sophisticated ladies, you be. Uh, it would go on and on and on, all at the Timbuktu, all at the same time. Mm. And then, you know, gradually it went away. And then it became mm. uh, Disney, all Disney. Right. And then it became something else. And then it became something else. It's interesting where we are right now, mm -hmm. because all of these plays that are on, while they don't directly confront the issues that are happening right now today they might be historic plays mm. that are being produced as a result of what is happening today so if you look at uh, one play that's on now alice childress wrote uh, trouble in mind about actors black and white who came to 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 rehearse a play mm. it takes place at a rehearsal 
Wonderful. But it deals with issues between uh, uh, between black and white in terms of assumptions and what the director assumed of the black female actress ah. and, and these sorts of things. It's a fascinating play. Mahesh, it was supposed to be the first uh, uh, black play on Broadway, mm -hmm. but they asked her to please rewrite it. This is in the 50s. Mm. Uh, can you rewrite the ending? because it's too down or it's too heavy. Mm. And she refused. Alice Childress, she said no. So they canned the production. And instead, the first production uh, by a Black female on Broadway was A Raisin in the Sun. Oh. Yes. Yes. So now, all these decades later, Trouble in Mind is on Broadway. Oh. So the time is right now. The time is right. And it, it happens that what she was talking about back then is still happening now. Mm. And I'm sure that's what we learn from plays about our history. That's what we learn from Shakespeare. That's what we learn from Chekhov. Mm. You know, there was probably no, no playwright so passionate about ecology, right? That's right. Yes. It's yes. Then check off. Yeah. And you look at his plays now, The Wood Demon or Cherry Orchard. Right. And, yeah. And you say, oh my God, yeah. it's about knocking down the trees and right. what yes. we're doing today. Yeah. Uncle Vanya. Yeah. Uncle Vanya. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 And your great adaptation of it. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's true. It's uh, so what, what we're saying is that. Uh, Art is holding a mirror up to society. It's mm -hmm. really, is society ready to see itself in, mm -hmm. the, in mm -hmm. the mirror, right? Well, what was your, when you worked, when you did the Chekhov plays mm -hmm. here, mm -hmm. you were, you were not, you were working with uh, Indian American actors. Right. Uh, in doing this show in America, which was very different probably than what your experience would be doing in, in India. Right. Or was it the same? I mean, because you were dealing with issues that were happening right now. Yeah. And when I saw that, I just want to say how mm. brilliant that production was. Mm -hmm. And you did it in New Jersey and then you took it to New York. And the brilliance of it was in the eyes of those actors who never would have experienced what you gave them as a director. And, uh, and, you know, Chekhov is so, the, the, the characters are so richly drawn, right? But now to bring in a director like you, they were going crazy over mm -hmm. you and still are. Yeah. Was the experience in relation to what we're talking about, the issues that happen today, the, 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 the social context, the was the experience different than what you think it would have been in India if you did the, the same piece? Well, not entirely, because what I was relying on was the memory of the Indian American actors, because almost all the actors I used were first generation Americans, right? Yeah, so right. almost every one of them could recall memories of India. Oh, I see. So Working with Chekhov was very interesting because uh, his concerns uh, in what, uh, early 20th century, uh, early 19th century, and our concerns in the 20th and 21st century in mm -hmm. India, there is such an overlap mm -hmm. uh, because we have the class system, we have the caste system, yeah. uh, we have the, uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the, landlords, the zamindars, and, uh, you know, it, uh, in a strange way, although it's against the law, we still have bonded labor, mm. right? So these mm. things do resonate mm. uh, uh, with, with us in India. And I think it resonated with the ICS actors uh, I worked with uh, as well, mm. because uh, they had the memory of uh, being in India in their childhood and their growing years and even their youth. So uh, I think uh, I wouldn't treat it very, very differently if mm -hmm. I were to do it in India. Mm -hmm. In India, the... Uh... Uh, excuse me, Mahesh. 
something happened uh something in the microphone and we've lost your sound just now this very second Manti, can you hear them? No. Yeah, there was this uh, which happened just now again. Maybe it's a loose connection. Yeah. There's a jarring sound right now. There's a jarring sound. Can you hear it? the perks of being on online medium where it's not just our voices that we are controlling but we have to control all the wires and everything and I think Ricardo and Mahesh were discussing some very important points in terms of how we are feeling just now right Ricardo and Mahesh are going to are logging out and they're going to log in again in the meantime those of you who are watching um, you're welcome to post your questions uh, on Facebook and we will bring them uh, to the artists over here. They are taking an entry again. And let's hope the microphone works out. While they're logging in, I would like to share with you that we have three computers over here where one is Arts Alive, others is a, other is a hybrid uh, event going on with Arnab Banerjee from Meta Arts invited me for this international hybrid event, where as said that I have performed as a poet, I've rendered my own poetry in Punjabi and Mahesh knows I don't write, but it was one off project. Would you try your sound again, Ricardo? We're here. Do you hear us? It's working. Okay. Zoom. Okay. <laughs> blame it on Zoom. Blame it on Zoom. <laughs> okay. Well, you once again, and I am so engaged with the conversation that's happening. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, can you sort of cue us in? Where did you lose us? What What were we last at? The very, the very last remember the exact sentence well i think just pick it up from where you guys were um, well, I'm asking you i think about it was just one second ago when i said uh you know i can't hear you the moment i couldn't hear you i said that okay all right sentence exactly yeah. so yeah so you were talking about um you don't think you would yeah yeah that's right because um uh, again, it's to do with the writing and that mm -hmm. uh, brings me back to my first question is to other writers because you mentioned the revivals of uh, Ain't Misbehaving and mm -hmm. uh, uh, the other plays mm -hmm. uh, which were, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, they were written by uh, white writers. and it, it, They were at least put together. I, I will say that The Wiz... Mm -hmm. was written by uh it was created by black writers but white white writers as well I, right I, I think that that was a particular time when it was just amazing to me as a young person right to see oh my god we could be up on broadway too we could that could be us too and i didn't think at that time mm -hmm. about who wrote it Right. I didn't think that way. I was just glad to be in the room. Yeah, sure, sure. <laughs> right? sure. To be absolutely, in the room. absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> but I think there would be a completely different sensibility uh, if if the writing came from 
a, a, totally. a different perspective. I, I, I think it's very much like what we had with uh, feminism, like when women began to write earlier. Prior, you know, it was all men writing a woman's voice. Yeah, yes, exactly. Yes, because yes. if you look at uh, the epics, uh, the Indian epics, right? Uh -huh, yeah. Now, the beautiful, the, the grand, and they're considered the greatest stories ever written. Mm -hmm. But the fact is that they were written by men. Yes, yeah. Right? So there, there's some things that um, could be challenged today, the way women are portrayed, because they're just constructions. The, the of, Bible. There you go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I think that however people are inspired, uh, the fact that they write and th because they are interested in a different culture or a different gender or orientation, that's, that's fine. But it's not where we need to be. Mm. Where we need to be today is giving voice to. Because a lot of times people, at least here, would say, and, and I spent a lot of time in South Africa as well, and, f and folks would say, well, uh, black, we don't have enough black writers yet. They're hmm. not trained enough yet. There's not this yet. They're not that. Hmm. So, so, so because of that, they, you kind of just halted you're halted in your tracks when it comes mm. to your own spirit and thinking well you could do it too until until and this is where crossroads came in mm. we were a theater that said i don't believe you mm. we're going to do it we're going to do it our way it right. will be our voice it will be our stories right. and it doesn't mean that we won't do shakespeare or we yeah, won't do yeah, no, check off no, or whatever. No, not at, mean all. That at yeah, all. We, we just need uh, a wider, uh, you know, uh, array, a change of diet for some time. A change and of not, diet. Yeah, yeah. And an understanding that we could do it too. Yeah. And that's the biggest thing. So when you talk about uh, the works in India coming from a particular uh, class or a particular state, and that's considered the, the norm. Mm hmm. What does that say to other artists? That's who are right. Not of that? yeah. Young kids growing up saying, "Oh, yeah, I I can't do it because I'm different." Right, right. I'm so glad you mentioned that because uh, again, I I love these sort of cross cultural adaptations, yeah. and I did this. Uh, adaptation of uh, Midsummer Night's Dream mm -hmm. with the Madhya Pradesh uh, uh, drama students mm -hmm. and that area is known for a very rich tribal belt. Uh, there are various uh, uh, tribal cultures and very very different from mainstream Hindu culture mm -hmm. right uh, so it was very interesting uh, doing this uh, adaptation because uh, I made the entire that the, the uh, you know Theseus and Hippolyta and the lovers they all come from this uh, uh, particular tribal belt and when they go run away to the forest uh, the forest is the city. Mm. That it's, oh, it's, uh, yeah. that's the opposite. Yeah. Great. And um, yes, yes. I just thought it would be nice to sort of, uh, because Shakespeare is doing most of the work anyway of uh, making fun of uh, the fickleness of love and how it changes. Yeah, and yes. there's this very, which I find very funny, this fight between Lysander and Demetrius yes, over, yes, over yes, yes. I think it's... Over uh, uh, Helena. Helena, yes. Helena, yes. yes, yes yeah. And the thing is, you here you have these uh, sort of testosterone-driven men <laughs> yeah. fighting, and it's ridiculous. <laughs> and, um, you, you know, there were children who were seeing this, and they loved it. Yes, they they yes. were laughing at uh, the Absolutely. whole bizarreness of, uh, of uh, what was going on. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I exactly. am my lord is well derived as he. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. You know, yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 So, uh, in fact, I have a clip which I sent to Ramanjit and maybe this Divya, is, this is a good time for you to play it. If you could find it, I'll chat a little bit more about uh, that with Rick. Uh, if you could just uh, uh, locate that uh, it's the second clip I sent, mm. and it's right at the beginning. Yeah. Sure. So, yeah. have you found it? Is it the Midsummer Night's Dream? That's right. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, just sharing. 
we actually did that when I was in school, mm. in, in grad school. We did it, but um, it was basically a love fest. Mm. And the, the theme song that the director put, it, put to it was Voulez-vous coucher avec moi ce soir? Mm-hmm. Uh, which is um, was a, a disco song at the time. Ah, oh. you know. oh right, right, uh, yes, vous yes. Vous <laughs> <laughs> it was. Uh, she felt it was all about sex. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. yeah, that's that's being interpreted as because there is mm-hmm. the the bestial element for Titania falling oh, yeah, in love yeah, with the ass. I know. <laughs> it's true. It's true. So I guess, oh, we're going to get to see got it. it. That's great. Yeah. Yes. Oh, look, I think, yeah. That's up. Fighting and slips the lead. That's an amazing, that's an amazing connection when you have children reacting to something, it's instinct, it's not, yeah. it, it's not thought through, it's just honest, right? Absolutely, and yeah. uh, it, it's, I think that's the best review you can ever get, how mm-hmm. children receive what, what you're doing, yeah, yeah, yeah. and they're so engaged with the action, mm-hmm. and that's what we try to get our actors to do is you know you know forget all of this emoting and stuff just just focus on what you're doing well this is okay so let me ask this question um in when i go to uh, um an indian theme show and the uh, here and the audience is primarily indian they don't respond as vocally mm. as black audiences would to the to the same, uh-huh. and and it it has a lot to do with uh, just things in our upbringing, like the church. Yeah, most black people. I'm not saying all, but most black people are not brought up. If they're brought up in the church, it's not necessarily the high Catholic. It would be Baptist, or it would be uh, Pentecostal, or it would be a, a, a church, a Protestant church that allows you and wants you to respond so mm-hmm. it's a, a call and response right uh, and and the call and response carries over into how we are in in theater our theater as well mm. and so the, the 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 even the the, the proximity and the way we try to create the black uh, uh, black theater experience the best way to do it is in a black box theater mm. you know where you could the, you could see each other, the audience, oh, right, right. or or thrust yeah. stage or something. But when it's straight on, you don't mm. see each other. Yeah, and I just wonder sometimes. I wonder if uh, what do I want to say? Do you have or do you not have that same tradition of call and response in the theater? Yes. Yep. Very. In fact, that is the traditional way. Mm. Like if you go to. Uh, uh, say, 
just outskirts of a city or mm. where there is a Ram Leela or a Krishna Leela performing. Right. Like I remember going to Vrindavan and seeing a Krishna Leela, which is the um, it's like what you would call the uh, the nativity play or, or something, okay. right? Okay. So th- this is similar. You look at the birth of Krishna and his journey and stuff. And the minute the curtain, it's usually a tableau of the God. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, there's a ritual where once the actor wears the crown of the God, he is considered to be the God, okay. right? And the entire audience, like when when they say they're singing J, you know, like and they throw up their arms yeah, and things. Yeah. So traditionally, yes, uh-huh. uh, it definitely is a very responsive, vocally mm-hmm. and uh, very palpable, mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. Uh, a physical, uh, uh, a very corporeal. Uh, response mm-hmm. uh, to what's going on with laughter and with e- even yes, like the children. acknowledgement. Yeah. Like the yeah, children. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because they don't feel that they're being impolite. That's right. Just, yeah, that, that's okay. such a Western concept of being sort, uh, sort of uh, restrained. Being and, uh, and restrained. Yeah, yeah. Well, it, it brings up a, a, a point, which is the, the role, and you were talking about the pandemic. During the pandemic, we moved away from live theater and instead saw theater and everything else we were doing via Netflix Mm -hmm. and via uh, 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 YouTube or TikTok or whatever, but was all either there or it was here, right? So you couldn't respond. Mm -hmm. You couldn't, you know, you couldn't have that, that same theater experience. And, and I guess I wonder, once the pandemic is over, God willing, and we're back to theater fully, will we be able to see Mm. that the beauty and value of theater, in terms of that live experience and the call and response and the relationship over the footlights between Mm. the audience and the stage and vice versa, is something that only theater can have. You can't have that on Netflix. Right. You can't get that here. Yeah. Right? That, I think, I'm guessing, is going to be one of our greatest challenges because during the pandemic, we have found that a lot of audiences who were strong for theater have just decided not to go anymore. Mm. First of all, they're, going, they're getting older. Mm. And they, you know, the pandemic, two years has caused them, well, I'm going to sit this one out. I'm going to yeah. sit that one out. And then you have this other new generation of folks coming up who have not, who are not being taken to the theater by their mm. by their teachers or by their, 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 their parents and grandparents. Of course there are those who can't wait to get to the theater. But I find that we're going to be challenged to re-explain and mm. re-educate the power of live theater to a new generation. Right. On the positive side, I think... Please. <laughs> Please. <laughs> I, I think... Okay, uh, le- let me go with... Uh, 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 just take it back. I think this is uh, an exciting liminal space that where it's like the caveman syndrome that, mm-hmm. you know, you, you've been inside a dark cave for so long you're reluctant to go into the light. Mm. You're reluctant to go out because uh, you can't deal with the with the bright light, mm. right? But when you do cross that liminal space mm. and you do go out, you're going to fall in love with the world again. Mm-hmm. And I see that happening, that what we see as a challenge now, how do we get them back mm. into the theatre? Because like the caveman, uh, there is this reluctance that, oh, you know, I'm so comfortable in my home yes, uh, yes. and I can, you know, watch National Theatre Live or, you know, yes, they're going to could... stream it on Zoom anyway. anyway. So, yeah, yeah, and so I can watch it anytime I want. <laughs> yeah. And I can hit the pause That's button right. so I get something to eat. Yeah. 
You can't do that in the theater. <laughs> yeah. But so, the light. But yeah. talk to me about the light. Like the light the is light. what it's all about because it is pure physics mm-hmm. being in the same space together. I mean, if yes, I'm, yes. I'm not a, a you know physicist or I haven't studied quantum mechanics, but the basic principle is that I affect you and you affect me when we're in the same space. Yes, like, yes. for instance, that if... Uh, if I shake my arm mm-hmm. like this, mm-hmm. I'm creating a vibration, right? Right, And now that vibration is moving into your body. Yes, so you're yes. expanding and contracting right. as, as you receive that vibration yes, and yes. it goes through you. Yes, Something yes. similar is happening in the theater with the, uh, uh, with the corporeal uh, movement and even the psychological dimension of it. And that is pure physics. You can't, uh, you can never, like if if Ramanjit is sitting there and she's watching me shake my arm, it's not disturbing her space at all. All she's Mm. seeing is an image of this man waving his arm. Brilliant, brilliant, yeah. But now look at you and you're smiling and your eyes are radiating and they do something to me which they won't do to people who are watching. That's true. Uh, That is the light. That is the light that uh, we're going... And when you shake, when you do that, I found myself partially wanting to yeah, back yeah, up exactly but at the same time there are other people who will react coming in you never know how and they you never react know. Yeah. which is the beauty of theater is absolutely. that you never yeah. know yeah absolutely from, from one audience yeah. to the next yeah and it is an experience because why did you move back when you got that you yes, know yes, it yes. does something to you and you're the wisdom that you acquire it's not an intellectual wisdom no. your body is is uh, reacting to it that's right. and it's that's that right. wisdom which yeah. we're tapping into yes. and that's the wisdom we're remembering not that we're that's acquiring right. that wisdom uh-huh. we're remembering that wisdom well i find that when you go to a, a game a bit a, a, a football or a soccer or a cricket or anything like that you you are re- responding to it you're there yes and you are responding because the audience is, you're a part of the crowd. And the That's crowd is right. Part of you. And you know, you're saying ole or something. And you're saying yeah. ole. But, yeah. but at the same time, what you, what, you, what you can't do, a lot of people will put it on TV and watch a game and they'll react a certain way. Mm. But they'll be, I've watched people watch it on TV and they'll cheer and they'll get mm-hmm. mad and they'll do all of this and they're alone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, They're alone. I think it's memory. I think you it's, think it's memory? It's memory. Yeah. Uh, at least I believe so. Yeah, yeah Because yeah. even when you're watching it on your big screen, yeah. there is a tendency to invite your buddies over and bring out the beer yes, and yes, sit yes, there. Yes, and yes, you, yes. you do want that collective you experience. Want that colla- okay, so that's the human element of yeah. it. You need, we need that collective uh, we, We've yes. missed it for two years. Absolutely. And that's what completes us. That's what completes yeah, us. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So whether it yeah. is uh, a crowd in your uh, in your home watching something, or you are live at the theater, I think the experience for theater in the future is going to be a combination of it all. Yeah, you're right. Thanks to, yeah, thanks yeah. to technology. Absolutely. Too, I be, think that's yeah. a good use of technology. Mm-hmm. Is that, And I love the tagline of National Theater Live, the screening. Mm-hmm. The tagline is the next best thing to being there. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I think it's wonderful because what you're saying is, okay, you can't come to London or wherever and pay 200 pounds for a ticket mm-hmm. but this is the next best it's thing the next best thing right and you 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 are going to get something yes, out yes. of it and and at the same time the tagline is saying but the best thing yeah is if you can get the license <laughs> yes which means it 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 is so much like uh, uh, going to mecca you 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 know sure. why is it that Millions of people want to yes want yes. to go yes. to Mecca. Yeah, what yeah. what does it mean? Can't they do their prayers at home on their own personal prayer it's mats? What you're saying, memory, memory. Except memory going, going back, ancestral. Yes, yeah, that's and what, yeah. that's what culture does: is that it hones your memory so that it can go far mm-hmm. back, mm-hmm. far mm-hmm. farther than just your Mm -hmm. limited birth and death cycle and i think that that speaks to that's that's about the audience but it's also about the the artists 
when they are, are, are totally into the characters and they're into that moment, whether it's a rehearsal hall or on the stage, they go back. They're taken yeah. back. They're possessed. That's what the actor's training is about. That's right. Is that how much of the past can you bring into the present? The magic if. The magic if. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> what if. Yeah, what if. And that that's magic right. if is actually your history. Yes, yes, That's yes. That's what you're bringing into yeah. that moment. Well, you know, the, that was what got me in hooked in theatre in the first mm-hmm. place. It was that... And, and it's now totally different. But at that time, there was so much going on around me in the world. There was racism and the movements and the wars and all of this. Theater, for me, as a kid, was a way to avoid all of that. It was a mm. way to build this wall of art to protect me. Art and music. Right. And within that, it's like, I'm good. I'm really good. Yeah. Whether I was acting or, or directing, I was in, you know, I'd do a play in the middle of the civil rights movement and the, and the Vietnam War. I'm doing My Fair Lady. Why? Because I love the music. Right. I love the story. Yeah. Uh, it, you know, I was not thinking about, well, it's, it's about a man teaching this lowly woman mm-hmm, something mm-hmm. or the fact that it was written by George Bernard Shaw right. that I didn't wasn't, matter it didn't yeah. matter to me until it did years later and yeah. then it made then it made a difference and then all of a sudden I saw theater its role for me mm. as not hiding me or protecting me but actually empowering me mm. uh, and I I want that for every child I, I, before they see that theater is a way for them to change the world, I mm. want them to first see that the experience in that audience or the experience on that stage mm. can create the human revolution within themselves first. And then they could do with it what right. they want. Yeah. But Absolutely. there's a beauty to art and yeah. music. And of course, yes. And we respond on different planes. Mm-hmm. Like you could respond on the aesthetic plane is what how you responded to yeah, My Fair right. Lady, just yeah, the yeah. sheer beauty of uh, how it's done and this transformation of this... Uh, you you know uh, flower girl into this right. lady yeah, and the exactly. humor that goes with it and yeah. and you could also respond to it on a social plane yeah and as later you said later on you respond to it on a political plane mm-hmm. and all these are perfectly valid mm-hmm. no matter which plane of truth and existence that draws you to the theater, Mm -hmm. it'll lead you to other planes Mm -hmm. as Mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. Because I feel that I am a political person because I do theater. It's not the other way around. That I do theater because I'm political. That had I not had the the magic of theater uh, to work with, uh, there are certain planes that I would never have explored. Uh, that I would have stayed in my limited, uh, very personal plane of uh, existence. And uh, I think that's what good art does, is that you enter through one door and suddenly there's so many doors that are open to you and you can wander in and out. You can go out one door and and it's like Alice in Wonderland, isn't yes, it? Yes. And, then you... <laughs> and it's like an onion. Yeah, you know, yeah, the more yeah, you yeah. <laughs> feel, the more there is. Absolutely. I, yeah. I think that you and I both chose theater. But I remember being in high school and going to see uh, a community theater play. And this one guy was an amazingly... He played the king in The King and I, right? And he was a friend of my, my parents and, uh, you know, very involved. He was African-American and the only African-American in the, in the cast. But he was playing the king and it was mm-hmm. amazing. But he was an architect. Mm-hmm. And there was a time in college when I was trying to decide between architecture and theater. Oh. And I believe that, that he was a large part of that because I saw that you could do both. Yes. I saw that. I was just going to say. <laughs> <laughs> you, could do, you could at least love, you could be whatever you are 
an engineer, a lawyer, yeah. and love theater so much that it is part of your life right. style. Maybe it's after work. Maybe it's the weekends, yeah. but it, but but it's you are still using the beauty and the magic right. of theater yeah. to change your life and the world. Absolutely, and you're bringing your life to the theater, enriching it. So it yes. works both ways. It works both ways. Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes I feel, especially architecture, I think theatre students should appreciate architecture a little more uh, because anything that's related to physics, time, space, mm -hmm. um, theatre uses yeah, it. Yeah, you know, when I was studying architecture, one of the things that I... I mean, I loved building. I loved the, 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 the spatial... Uh, how you could actually change spatial realities based on, on your context. But I also got to the point where I felt, is it lonely for me? Would it be a lonely existence sitting at my drafting table all day long mm. and it's just me? Right. I think that uh, there's a beauty to it as well. In fact, now as a writer, because I didn't write originally, but that's what I do as a writer yeah. now. But at that time, I wanted to be around people. Mm. And that's why I chose theater. Because I just wanted to be around yeah. people. I wanted to be around people. I want to be in the rehearsal hall. <laughs> yeah. For me, too. Like, I, I don't know whether we would have met and we would be sitting here now if we weren't involved in the theater. Oh, so Who let's knows? talk about how we met. Yes. Let's <laughs> talk about <laughs> From my, okay, so my, uh, my part of it. Okay, let's hear you. Okay, my part of it was that uh, I was going to India for the first time. It was a trip that my wife and I were taking, and she was born in India, so she knew everything. She was going to take me, and we went to a, a wedding first. In, in we were going to go to a wedding in, in, in Kathmandu. Now, the fact that there is a wedding, mm. not that it is unusual in India, yeah, <laughs> right? It's not a, yeah. But it's a really great reason to go somewhere, right? So we were going to do this, and it was a great reason to go see everything else. Well, for me, I wanted, I needed, there was, I knew I needed to connect with theater people. I wanted to know what it was like. Mm. Um, who was Mahesh Datani? Who was this person and that person? I was hearing about people, and I heard about you. And when I found out how to get in touch with you, uh, you weren't... Ava fully available because you were in rehearsal and I said oh okay that's too bad and then you wrote to me and you said but why don't you come to rehearsal <laughs> so I did and that's my part of how I got right to yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's true I mean when I received your email I just felt like kicking myself I said oh god you know uh, what uh, how do I meet this guy it sounds yeah, very yeah. interesting and um, I, but I got work to do <laughs> <laughs> you were you were rehearsing yeah. for a piece that you were going to film that's right yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. absolutely and I'll never forget our first meeting because you had some difficulty finding the place and it is not it was difficult to find because we were inside that uh, huge complex yes, uh, yes, right yes, and uh, so I told my assistant director I was rehearsing with my actors mm -hmm. that you know just be on the lookout mm -hmm. uh, you know he's yeah. coming and uh, he's driving there and whatnot when he is standing there and he's texting me saying, there's nobody here, you know. I said, just hang on, he'll be there. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah. and then suddenly I get this call from him saying, your friend is in an Audi, you know. And I, yeah, 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 you yeah, came yeah. in this fancy yeah. car, right. And I said, I don't know. <laughs> you, know? <laughs> you don't know anybody. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> and I, so I, I figured it might be you. <laughs> you <know? laughs> so, <laughs> so I came out. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, first of all, we were gaping at the luxury of this car. <laughs> and then you step out. And I'm gaping at this, the luxury of your smile, because oh. you had this year-to-year -year smile. Uh, I was ready <laughs> for an experience that was going to, it was like, wow, I know theater there, but I don't know theater here, and I can't <laughs> wait to get in there, I can't <laughs> wait to get in there. 
So yeah, that was me just uh, yearning for theater. I could sense that. I, could I went sense through Kathmandu and Pokhara, and then we went to through Rajasthan, and we went all these places. But when I got to you, mm. I felt like at home. I felt. Oh. I felt. Ah, this is. I could breathe. I loved all the, the mm-hmm. other things that I learned, but yeah. I... You're probably holding your breath in awe of, of the other things, you know? That, yes, uh, yes, uh, yes, yeah. yes. And, and I came in, and uh, you were in rehearsal, and I'm sitting there, and I thought, this is nothing new. <laughs> this is theater. Right. It's just that it was theater there. That's right. It, 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 I mean, of course, there were, there were things I learned and new things and nuances. But, but theater, the rehearsal hall is the rehearsal hall. Wherever you are in the That's world. That's right. Yeah, absolutely. Actors and directors and writers. There's yeah. a way we do our work. There's, right. There's a craft. There are designers. There are... There, everybody knows their role that they play. In Absolutely, movie. yeah, yeah, and yeah. we all come together. We it's, collaborate in the way. Again, I go back to young people and wanting young people to know that at the heart of theater is not the lights or the sets mm. or the uh, costumes. It's the collaboration. Yes, it's the collaborate. You can't do it without each other. That's right. Yeah. Then it's like a sports team. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah. Yeah. It reminds me of the Streisand um, number. Uh, I don't know when it was originally sung, but People. People. Yeah, people, need, people it's are from Funny lucky. Girl. It's from Funny it's Girl. From yes, funny of course. Girl. Yeah, right. yeah, 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 yeah. And, and wow, mm-hmm. I can't believe you said that was the first play I was ever in. There you go. <laughs> I, 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 okay, so, so, I wanted, I, I had no thought of being in this play. It's just that my friend, he wanted to try out mm. for Funny Girl as a dancer. Uh-huh. I said, Benny, a dancer? You're a guy. How, how's it going to look? How's it going to look? You're getting in there and you're going to be a dancer. I went to make fun of him. Ah. Uh. And sure enough, he got up there on that stage and he wanted to audition and he's learning the dance le- steps. And I'm like... Well, That's I, not I, so I, bad. I, 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 I think I can... <laughs> Okay, let me get up there too. And, and, See, and that's, that's what theater does. <laughs> I that, know. It, yes, the magic sort of dispels all these uh, walls we have. Around I was in us. the audience watching him. He was on the stage. Right. That magic, boom. Yeah. Across. And so um, that was the first play I was in. Now I can't tell you that I knew the true meaning and power of collaboration until I got into that play and realized in the rehearsal process, because a lot of it is hard. Uh, Theater is not always easy. No. It's never easy. Yeah. Uh, And sometimes it's very hard and you end up in pain and, oh my God, this and that. But you know what? You're doing it together. You're doing it with all the rest of your cast members. and, And then you create this bond. And then you call each other family. And then you get to opening night and you're crying mm. because of all of the time and the, and, and the pain, but the fact that you did it together and you get out there and then there's this other level of collaboration when the audience joins you and then it's between you and the audience. And then you get to closing night and you're crying because you don't want to say That's goodbye. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's so sad to sit there in the auditorium and watch the stre- uh, set being taken off. Oh, and God. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, you yeah. know, it's put together with such love and care. And then now ripped you're off, just... Yeah, ripped off. Ripped apart. <laughs> ripped apart and thrown in a dumpster. <laughs> but, you know, that's, that's the thing that, that people who love theater to also understand that it is temporary. Mm. Yeah. It, it, it will not be here tomorrow necessarily. A, a performance, a mass in church, uh, a, 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 a 
Khuja, a, uh, a, a, a cricket game, it's never going to be the same the next day. Right, yeah. And it takes you back through history without even thinking about it because mm. it's in you already. It's in your memory. Yeah. And it takes you forward to things you could only have imagined if you walked in that room uh, or on that field or in that uh, church or, or wherever you are that everything is possible. And that's the great thing about theater, is that in the theater, it's the magic if. If I could be this person, yeah. if I could be that person, if I could be in in, in, in Vienna, if I could be yeah. in Johannesburg, right? what would my character do? Yes. Theater allows you that. Yeah, theater allows you that. Yeah. yeah. Travel agents don't. Not in the same no. way. <laughs> well, there's some people who could travel all over the world and yet not leave their home because oh, they're the yes. seeking. I mean, the people Astro who come. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, no, I mean, I mean oh. that they don't. Uh, like some people, uh, I can think of Indians. They would go on this tour to, let's say, the Southeast mm -hmm. Asia or to Europe or something, mm. but they would have an Indian menu. They would have uh, uh, the oh, travel agency will make sure there is an Indian cook and uh, giving them their stuff yes, and yes, sort yes. of they live in the luxury and comfort of their hotel yes. area yes, and then yes. get on a bus to do their sightseeing yes, and then they yes. buy their souvenirs and they feel they've been to yeah. Bali and or they have it. They have they it. Have yeah. it. Well, it's Americans going to another country too and looking for McDonald's. There you go. <laughs> you know, we we, yeah. we all have that. I don't know. We we, we have that temptation. Let's mm. put it that way. It's, to, it to, is to the close caveman. it up. Yeah, yeah. That we, yeah, 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 yeah. We don't want to go to the light. We but do, when, but we don't. We do, but it takes courage. It takes courage, yeah. exactly. And because when we do, mm -hmm. we're grateful for the discovery mm -hmm. of the world outside. When you audition for a show, you prepare mm -hmm. to go to that audition. When you go to another country, you hopefully prepare by learning the language. That's right. Yeah. Some way of putting a foot in. That's right. That's right. That's yeah. right. Uh, talking about putting a foot in, you are here now. What are you doing? <laughs> yes, I know. I've I've had my foot in the door for many years now uh -huh, with uh -huh. uh, my work with the uh, ICS, which is a wonderful yes. community yes, theater, yes. and uh, you know, and we are performing in your space, yes, which yes, which yes. is so exciting. And um, I'm doing a production of a very, um, an older play of mine, Dance Like a Man. Okay. And um, it's, uh, it's a play about dancers, mm -hmm. uh, Bharatanatyam dancers, and sort of looking back on their lives mm -hmm. and yet looking forward because their daughter is now going to perform uh, her grand debut. Uh, so it's uh, the challenges of the past and how they affect the present and the future is what the play is about. And but I'm intrigued by the title. Title. I, I knew <laughs> I could sense that in your eyes. Yeah, I know. Well, it is about the, first of all, like all societies, Indian society also has a very constructed idea of gender. Mm -hmm. In fact, even the word gender is cultural, culturally constructed. So uh, by tradition, there's certain dance forms which men did not perform. Mm -hmm. And interestingly, there are some forms that only men performed and women didn't. And uh, this was a way of sort of saying that it's not that you become, like your experience uh, with uh, Funny Girl, you mm -hmm. said, you couldn't believe it that why is he's a guy why does he want to dance right, right? right, right. but when you saw it uh, the the genderness of it fell away. fell away right yes yes and i think this is what dance does to um, 
uh, to people in India, the ones who take it up seriously, is then, uh, you, you know, you're not sort of clinging on to a cultural concept mm -hmm. of gender, which also comes from memory. Mm -hmm. So there is a challenge. Mm -hmm. And so the title Downs Like a Man, mm -hmm. uh, because interestingly, if we go for, if we remember far back enough, mm -hmm. we have the concept of the Ardhanarishwar, which is Shiva and Parvati, the, you, very much like the yin and yang, mm -hmm. that when they dance the cosmic dance, they come together, mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. male and the female, okay. the masculine and the feminine, mm -hmm. and that's the dance of yes. creation. It's also the dance of destruction. I see. I see. So, well, it, 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 it also speaks uh, to, metaphorically, to, to a lot of what we're going through today, right? In yeah. terms of, of uh, what we consider to be gender roles, and mm -hmm. the the society is 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 grappling with evolution, mm -hmm. uh, the evolution of 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 ideas and ideals, and what a society is, and what a man is supposed to be, yeah. a woman is supposed to be, and what are you supposed to be? And it's not an easy fight. It's 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 that that's going on and that the same in terms of of just uh, you know orientation right and at the same time it, it is the um uh the racial issues that are going on in this country at least uh, as it relates to uh um, simply d like disparity in terms of who gets COVID tests first mm -hmm. what communities Get the get the test kits first. My God, I didn't. Oh, it was a, it's a huge issue. Oh. Uh, but but even if you look at the rest of the world, the fact that we have stockpiles in this country of vaccines we are not using, mm. where if you look at other places in the world, there 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 there's such a shortage. That's right. And so you have these disparities that are coming to the forefront. Have we always felt that? Yes. But it has ever been said so boldly, no. Well put. Yeah. Uh, yes, absolutely. Yeah. And it comes back to your first email when we were setting up this conversation where mm -hmm. you said that how do we respond to the change, whether it's social or political, our world is changing yeah. and we are in some way bound to respond to it because that's that's who we are the role of an artist yeah the role of an artist yes, right yes, yes. it is a response to our world mm -hmm. uh, and so ourselves as well because we're mm -hmm. a part of the world and uh, if you look at history i mean if you look at uh, right from feminism to uh, lgbt or uh, whether it's race or caste or mm -hmm. whatever mm -hmm. it's literature and theater which which has been at the forefront of those changes oh, yes. yeah Absolutely. so it's it's like yeah. this question people think that art brings about change mm -hmm. but as it really is that change brings about art mm -hmm. and then art reflects that That's change right. amplifies and the change and you were talking about that when we were first talking absolutely you, you're absolutely yeah. you're absolutely yeah. right i i you know certainly there are artists who feel art for art's sake so I don't have to be involved in reacting to what is going on in the street uh, for me to be an artist. And they're absolutely right. Absolutely. You, it you still is a response to something. It's, a, it's still yeah. a response to something. Yeah. The fact that you say, I don't have to react to what's happening in the street. You are is reacting. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, shakes to, you know, to thine own self be true. Mm. And I, yeah. I feel that, that however it comes out, as an artist, is on you. Just, just be be honest enough yeah. to let it come out. I think that's the bottom line. It, it's about how honest are you to yourself? Because yes. if you aren't, it's not going to come out uh, in your art. No. I, I think that that's the, the the purest form of expression. Well, now we're both writers as well, and I find that one of the hardest. I'm, I'm getting better at it now. But one of the hardest things for me as a writer was getting out of the way of my characters. Ah, oh, Do you yeah, know what I mean? Like, yeah. if I'm honest 
I would let those That's voices right. come out. Yeah. But if I want to say, no, this is what I want to say, it's like, Rick, it's, you're not the character. Yeah. The character's in you, yes. That's but right. But let the character, yeah. listen, just listen. 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 Yeah. You know, one, one uh, writer used to say, I, I take the pen, I put it to the paper, and then I watch it move. Yeah. And that's, I think, uh, one of the greatest lessons I've had to learn and I'm continuing to learn is how to get out of the way mm. of the characters. That's so interesting because I was uh, hearing uh, Paula Vogel talk about something similar. Mm -hmm. And I think in one of her plays, I think it's the Baltimore Waltz, mm -hmm. where she talks about her brother. Uh -huh. and But it's not her in... The, in the in the play right and the question was asked as to what what how much and she says that so much of it is not me writing myself into the play but mm. writing myself out of the play <laughs> yes yeah, yeah. It's, that's right yeah. exactly i mean the the brilliance of a writer like august wilson is that all of his voices that are in his head come from memory of sitting, he would go to a diner in Pittsburgh, right? This this uh, cafe in Pittsburgh, and and just listen, and just listen, right? And you, you, the the brilliant characters that came out of August Wilson came out because he allowed them out. Yes, and you have the whole history of black culture, American culture coming uh, out, yeah, shining yes. through his work. We, 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 yeah, yeah he, it, the 20th century cycle, he, the 21st century cycle, yeah. every, every, you know, decade he wanted to write it. Right, and, yeah, uh, it starts with yeah. Ma Rainey's Black Bottom or something. Well, he, uh, the no. first he Joe wrote Turner. was, uh, no. the very first was Jitney that he wrote, but they were not, not necessarily in order. Order, yes. You know, and then right. eventually. Yeah. And I wonder whether he, started by saying, I want to write for every era, you know? I don't think mm. he did. He no, probably no, wrote, it and then just he started happened. To see yeah, it, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and I think there's something soon. very organic about those plays. They don't yes. seem like uh, social documents. That's right. They're, that's they're right. so human. The characters are so human. Yes. And through them we get, uh, you know, this amazing study of, mm. uh, of, uh, uh, of culture in Absolutely. America. Absolutely. I, I think... Yeah, that's why he's considered one of the greatest American playwrights, that's right? That's right, that's yeah. right. We did, at Crossroads, we were, I, I always, I, I loved August Wilson plays, but I thought, you know, other people do them so much. Why should Crossroads? Hmm. I would love to do an August Wilson play before it goes to New York. Yes. And sure enough, years later, boom, I meet August Wilson. Huh. And he wants to do the first play he ever did, Jitney. Mm. But when he wrote Jitney, he wasn't August Wilson. Right. You know, he was he was just a, he was a poet, mm. and he wanted to revisit it. And this was later in his life, and so he did. And he was with us at Crossroads, in New Brunswick, New Jersey, for a month. Uh, wow. Every rehearsal, uh, and his wife was uh, Constanza was the costume designer mm. and he was just part of our community as we supported him mm. revisiting the first play he ever wrote after all that he's written and it, it, it's a it's quite a beautiful thing and i i, I find it, it might have been then that i i just wish i could have written too because i i didn't get to playwriting until you know much later in my life but there's something beautiful about just sitting with yourself and, right. and then realizing you're with so many people inside. That's right. And you have so much to offer mm -hmm. as a writer as well uh, because you, you've had such such an interesting and diverse background well, you in life. Well. So, yeah, I mean, well. you as well. And, and you've gone and you've done it from for so many for so many different uh, types of media, right? Well, that's true. Yes, although theater has been my uh, uh -huh. uh, uh, my that's your uh, root. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's my uh -huh. root. That's uh -huh. the language that I express myself best in. But yes, I've had the uh, the good fortune of doing radio drama, of doing a film, 
and uh, mm-hmm. you know, and also filming theater. So that oh, talk to me about radio drama. Oh my God, I love it. Yeah. Yes, and I think it's the most challenging medium, because wow. you're uh, again very much like that. Your audience, you have to tap into your audience. Your audience, your listeners' imagination. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. At the same time, you don't have their commitment. They could be doing the laundry or they could be driving a car or whatever. Interesting. Yeah. And, but yet, unlike television, uh, right, you uh-huh. have to tap, they, they need to tap into their imagination for it to work. So you're offering them just a soundscape. Uh, it's just words and sounds and little else and silences. Right, so within that, you got it. You've got. <laughs> Do you find yeah. that uh, that uh, what do you imagine your audience doing? So let's say your audience turns it on. Yeah. And naturally, they they want to be doing something. They're doing something else uh, while they're listening. Is yeah. there a point where they put down? Yeah, I was going to say that is what uh, would be the ideal audience for me is that mm-hmm. whatever it is they do well i hope if they're driving that <laughs> they uh, they drive carefully yes, um, yeah. but that's very interesting because i've just done uh, an audio play after 20 years mm. for um uh, uh, for a New York company called This Is Not A Theatre Company, run mm-hmm. by Erin Mee. Okay. Um, she's the one who said, oh, Rick, uh, of course I know him, he's uh-huh. famous, right? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, she has this amazing um, vision, like all the plays that her company, and that's why it's probably called This Is Not A Theatre Company, mm-hmm. they're site-specific. So she has audiences by a swimming pool with the actors performing in the pool. And there was this wonderful podcast where uh, you're encouraged to take a boat trip uh, mm-hmm. in, uh, 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 on the Hudson. Mm-hmm. And you get these um, instructions and things as to what you could look at and what. And yet it's dramatic. Mm-hmm. Uh, I haven't experienced that. But I did something which is site specific but it's audio in the sense they're in their spaces and it's called a little drape of heaven and basically it's your relationship with your fabric so i encourage the listeners to get out a piece of fabric preferably of another gender not uh-huh. your the gender you identify with and hold it close to your heart while you listen to this. Mm. And this is a story from the perspective of a sari, a wedding sari <laughs> oh, <wow. laughs> that's in the closet <laughs> and is waiting for the next wedding to come out. Yes, but yes. the surprise is that this little boy pulls out the sari and wears it and plays with it. And yes, so it's yes. a relationship oh, between that. Wow, yeah. <laughs> wow. I, I love the idea of radio drama. Uh, I love it too. To, yeah, yeah, being able to hear yeah. and, and let your imagination go wherever. It's Absolutely. Go, right? Have you done much audio drama? Not a whole lot, mm-hmm. but some. I, I did an August Wilson piece called "The Piano Lesson" mm. uh, for 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 for, for, uh, for radio for BBC Radio. Actually. Right. Yeah. Well, yeah. most of my earlier work was for BBC uh-huh, Radio okay. Four. Yeah. 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 So I did that. But I, I just find, that's the other thing. At Crossroads, we also have a festival called the Genesis Festival. It's totally about new plays, mm-hmm. okay? So, so it's just readings, and it's writers who want to hear their stuff. So the writer is there, but the actors have rehearsed maybe 10 hours tops. Uh, and then they sit down, it's all seated, they sit down with the script, and they read it through. Uh, they act it out, of course. But there is no, there are no costumes, lighting, or etc. And I find the beauty of that. Mm. And people come to the Genesis Festival because they love being able to interact with the right with the with the with the play without all the other trappings. Mm. Knowing that eventually there will be the trappings, but they want to see it bare. Mm. And I find that what that does is tell me people really want to engage their imagination. They do. More than the world uh, allows them to. You're right. Yeah. And more so they turn to 
drama to, mm-hmm. to theatre to help them with that because our world doesn't allow us to you use that more, less and less because you know we don't even remember phone numbers anymore and no, I, I grew don't. up yeah, <laughs> you do don't. no I don't uh, I don't well, I get in do trouble I. <laughs> I get in trouble for that you, know, you just you know you put it as a name yeah now, yeah you know? so if, if yeah. for some reason your contact list on your phone gets wiped out you're completely lost yes yes and unless now, you have the cloud yeah, well, that's the thing. <laughs> now you have to, you don't even have to worry about that. <laughs> you don't just have to worry pull about that. that. Down. <laughs> yeah, yeah. just whoever is take, yeah. taking care of that cloud, yeah, just make sure right. that they're yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. Uh, well, if, if your cloud uh, account is hacked and you don't have that access. Can you imagine a cloud being hacked? It's, it's just possible, the imagery of that. Yeah. Is, you know, I don't know. It's crazy. I don't even know what a cloud is. I just know it's yeah. there but and this, I'm glad. See, this is the thing is mm. that it's. Uh, we think cloud. That's that's manipulation of our imagination because we imagine this heavenly sort of uh, uh, yeah. thing that is right. It's up away from us. All that. Yeah, it's away from us. So yeah. so it's safe. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's safe. It gives us this false sense of safety. But I think that a lot of our need also is for the thing that has not that has yet to be defined. So if you're a part of something that has never been defined. Mm. A cloud is not defined. It's not mm. just that. It's not a square. It's it's something yeah. away from your reality. Right. And it almost says, well, maybe I don't trust myself, so let me put it there. Right. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. It's, yeah, that's yeah. it. And then once it's there, it doesn't have to be here. <laughs> right. That's <laughs> true. Well, and, and then you think about, think about who came up with the idea of starting something called Google, like right. where does that word Google come yeah. from, or <laughs> Zoom, or that's right. or uh, you know these names of things, Bing and Bong and TikTok, TikTok, <laughs> and so uh, it, it's all saying something about us right now and our need to move away from that which has been defined so much before and has baggage. A word has baggage; it carries baggage, and this pulls away from all of that. Mm. It pulls away and, and say we're gonna do a whole different thing. Yeah, well, that's a, that's manipulation, isn't it? Because they're going to be the Brahmins of the future. They will have all the knowledge, yeah. they'll have all the skills, <laughs> yes. and all we we'll know is, oh, what do I press? Oh my God, it's not uh, it's not listening to me. What what's the problem? You know, that's right. it's hung up on me. And know? they're not even going to be pl- things to press. Yeah, they're going to come up with ways so that it's your mind. Right. It, right. Yeah, and they're going to install chips in your brain, and or... then they'll know every everything about you. <laughs> well, I think they do now. They do now. It's scary. <laughs> I know. I know. Oh man! Yeah. But the, yeah. the 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 and that's the other part of theater. I, th- I think that when my life was scary, that's when I went into the theater to to get away from all of that, hmm. uh, to get away from it all, close the door, and just be in the theater. And I know that there are people who need that mm. because I did. Yeah, yeah, I did too. Yeah, I needed it. In fact, I can't imagine life without theater now. Yeah, yeah. it's uh, so precious to me. Yeah, hey, it's interesting, isn't it? For for some of us, it means the world, and mm. for other people, it just is nothing. Like. What are these guys doing with their lives? You know, I think and which is uh, yeah, yeah, it's nice. I it's interesting. Yeah. I mean, I, I think that there are people who might not go to the theater but will watch a soap opera. Yeah, and you watch a soap opera right. and you think, okay, well, where do these characters come? You know, the reason you like the soap opera is because the it's it's driven not by the plot but by the character. Mm. So you follow the character from from episode to episode. Well, that's what. Chekhov did. It was about the character. That's what um, uh, uh, you know. The Greeks, Greek theater, certainly did, and That's African right. theater. Yeah, you know, certainly it, it, it's about the it, you know about the character. Whereas uh, some Greek theater, just like uh, Shakespeare, it's the plot that drives it. That's true, right? because Aristotle said that it's the sequencing of events That's that right. creates. And yeah. again, quite coming back to Paula Vogel, I'm just full of her because uh-huh. I've just seen yeah, a few true. of her lectures. She said that that was a ploy to put the emphasis on plot 
because when women wanted to write, they would say, how can a woman write about war? How can a woman write oh. about... You, you know, it was like a denial of yes. theatre and plot. Yes, yes. Uh, it's interesting that, uh, you know, soap operas and things is also appealing to the consumption of story mm -hmm. uh, as opposed to Absolutely. the relation to story. Absolutely. That we're consuming plot like how we would consume uh, fries and a burger. Which is why you need it the next day. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. Because, yeah. Uh, you know, you could, uh, you know, put on one of those uh, uh, series, web series, mm -hmm. and, uh, you, you know, be drawn into it. Oh, people but at, at the, yeah. after a week, you've forgotten it because you're yeah. on to something you're else. You're on to another series. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas yeah. great theater, you never forget. I mean, I remember plays I've seen when I was 14 or 15, and there's some scenes, I may not remember everything, but yeah. some things just what's the, what's the first one that blew your mind you know I was I think about 12 years old uh -huh. and it was very interesting it was a Gujarati play mm -hmm. and it's not that my parents were very fond of the theater mm -hmm. but it was a community event so mm -hmm. which means it supported the language okay that's why there were so many of us mm -hmm. and interesting story because I met the playwright decades later wow. and mm -hmm. uh, I was there and of course there was audiences chattering and if you know Indian audiences we just don't want to shut up yes. uh, right and fortunately this was before cell phones and things and it's only when there was a gun that was pulled out on stage that mm -hmm. people began to quieten down you know and what was very interesting about the play is at the end, the gun was sort of uh, hand, very much like the Chekhovian gun. Even at 12, I was completely naive about dramaturgy or any, mm -hmm. anything. I knew that gun is something, is, it's going to go off yes, at some yes, point. Yes. I knew it. Yes, I just yes, knew yes, it. Yes, yes. It was tapping into it. And sure enough, at the end of Act 1, just before the interval, the actress turns around and shoots at someone in the audience, right? And they use blank bullets, so it the it was this loud, uh, you know, report. And the person sitting in the front row screamed and fell down dead. <laughs> and had to be carried away. Of course, it was part of the act. Yeah. But at that time, I didn't. I thought it was real. Yes. Yes. Know? Oh wow. And the whole thing about art and reality and you know of course I analyzed it later yes, but yes. that has stayed with me wow. for you know more than 50 years now oh. yeah oh, that's amazing yeah. I think the first one for me was uh, growing up in Camden New Jersey which is outside of Philadelphia which means that it's about two and a half hours from New York mm. and as kids we were and and uh, you know the states was pretty segregated at that time so we were part of a YMCA group and a, uh, a, a another social group, and we were all it was black children being taken to Broadway mm. by uh, the mothers mm. uh, who were the chaperones and took us up there. But it's because every month they wanted us to experience something about culture or the bigger lives beyond our block on the street, and going up to see a. A, a, a show on Broadway, Hello Dolly. Mm. No clue what it was about, no mm. interest in it. Mm. But it was New York, and that was pretty right. exciting <laughs> for me. And I guess I was, uh, yeah, I, I can't remember how I, I, 11, 12 years old, no, maybe 14 years old. And, and uh, w the bus pulls up in front of the, the theater, Broadway theater. We get out, and it's New York, and it's so cool. And we walk in, we go in, we sit down, and then the music begins, the orchestra plays, and it's like, wow, this is cool, because I always love music. Mm -hmm. But then the curtain comes up to Hello, Dolly, which was a hit, because Carol Channing had done it right. and David Merrick had produced and it was this big big hit on mm. Broadway uh, and it was you know just like most Broadway shows at that time it was an all white cast mm. but the curtain goes up and I'm like I said wait a minute they look like me mm. 
It was an all black cast. Hmm. Pearl Bailey was the star. Oh, right. She played yeah. uh, Dolly. She yeah, played yeah. Dolly, and Cab Calloway hmm. played uh, Vandergill. Uh-huh. And, and what was fascinating was what that effect. The effect that that had on me, it's almost maybe the opposite of the gun thing for you. Uh But it was still the same trajectory. Uh It was like, bam! I could do that too. Mm. Because they look like me. And that that was pretty meaningful. Mm. I, I think that that it's probably everybody has a story about their first That's thing, right. right, and how it somehow connected. And, and you yeah. remember, as yeah. you were talking yeah, about before. Yeah, the, just, like you, you, you remember it so vividly. The, I remember uh, it because, because it, it, yeah, because it was vivid, you're right. Yeah, it's because it's <laughs> yeah. important to it, us. It, I guess, yeah, it, yeah, yeah. It, it, it is. Right. <laughs> uh, but I do, I did want to ask you, going back to the conversations of the relationship between the arts and what's going on in the world today, right? It's, it seems to me, when you talk about young people and how you look at theater, how important it is. Like you were to say, it, it meant a lot to you when you were young. It didn't mean a whole lot to your parents, right, necessarily, but to you it did. And it was because there was an immediacy in the moment, that you were in a moment and it was about now, Mm. right? Do you find that that, uh, theater in India, like to what degree does theater in India deal with issues that are happening right now? Mm. Or is there a risk that you take by offending people if you were to address the themes and and uh, if so, which what are the most I shouldn't say offensive, but con- confrontational themes mm. that are going on in the theater today? There's so much going on in the country, mm-hmm. and yes, there are some very brave uh, theater groups, mm-hmm. uh, and e- even if you go back like twenty, twenty five years, I, I can't remember now. One of our theatre practitioners was killed because of the play that uh, they were performing. Mm. And there is this uh, Dalit theatre group, uh, Kabir Kala Manj. Uh, Dalit is the self-identified term for the oppressed classes, people who were earlier seen as lower class or mm-hmm. lower caste, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. I hate the word low caste. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I think Dalit is definitely the right word. Because I hate it the means word caste. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's a whole different story. <laughs> Except for a cast in a play. Yes, that's yeah, different. Actors, yeah, we, yeah. Love, <laughs> love, we love cast. Yeah, cast. <laughs> that we get that. <laughs> yeah. And we love cast where there is a choice, you know, yes. not, not just yeah. because yes. uh, of a family you're born into. Yeah. Um, so, they were in hiding because there, there was an arrest warrant against them and all they were doing was speak about oppression and how much uh, oppression they face because of the caste system that is inherent in Hindu culture. So today we have um, a rising of uh, what is seen as Hindu identity but it's just a reactionary uh, kind of uh, ideology uh, which is gaining very uh, a lot of uh, popularity and that's why we have the government uh, we do in power. There have been groups uh, and a lot of stand-up comedians have faced flack uh, just for what like there was there's one very famous uh, stand-up comedian Veer Das mm-hmm. who was at the Kennedy Center a few months ago mm-hmm. and he said that I come from two Indias right there is this and there's this and he very very in a humorous way brought out the the duplicity of what we believe in and what we practice and mm-hmm. what is real and what's projected and mm-hmm. things like that and uh, there, there was this uproar and uh, there were trolls and, uh, you know, uh, 
politician saying there should be an arrest warrant against him because this is almost seditious, uh, right? That this is speaking against the country. Was this their reaction to him saying it at the Kennedy Center? I think so. I think that made a huge difference. In Washington, D.C. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. And he has a very, very strong following. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. uh, you, you, you know, and that's probably what was threatening. Oh, right, so uh, in many ways, the resurgence of the caste system, because for whatever political, is very, very real. Mm. because vote banks depend on caste representation. In fact, there was a movement that when you have the next uh, census, population census for, uh, you know, elect electoral work, that we do not have this category where you state your caste, right? Mm -hmm. And But it was uh, run down in the parliament for I don't know what the reasons are because that's so important to them to plan their campaigns and their promises based on caste. Wow. And so everything is about representation now. So what is the artist's response to that? Well, I think there are some uh, artists who are questioning mm -hmm. uh, the whole role of not just uh, politics, but uh, Hinduism as we practice it, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. Now, one can argue that this is not real Hinduism, that Hinduism, if you go back, mm -hmm. uh, of course it had the forecast system mm -hmm. in place, but it wasn't as rigid as it sure. is practiced sure. now, mm -hmm. that it wasn't something of inheritance, it was simply about your profession. Sure, sure. Right? right uh, sure. So, uh, th there are those arguments and I'm not an expert. Of course. So, I don't know what uh, what is then really... Then let me ask it a different way then. Mm -hmm. If you were to choose a play, a classic, mm -hmm. to, through allegory and metaphor, mm. uh, speak your bravest mind about something going on today right what would that play be you know i'm not sure there is an indian classic i, I can rely doesn't on doesn't have to be indian okay yeah okay good question mm -hmm. you know in a strange way that uh, you mentioned august wilson uh -huh. right yes. now i have only seen a production of joe turner's come and gone many yeah. many years ago at the uh, ashland uh, uh, festival oregon Oregon, yes, festival. and it was a brilliant, uh, yeah. and it, yeah. it really moved me. Uh, but I read Ma Rainey's Black Bottom. Mm -hmm. I can, I would say I would love to do an adaptation of that, because oh. it's so, this whole relation between art and society mm -hmm. is so well mirrored in America's uh, response to black artists mm -hmm. in, you, you know, a hundred years ago. Yeah, so Ma whatever. Rainey was a fa very famous blues singer who uh, comes to this recording session mm -hmm. to do this, 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 this song. But at that particular time, with the white producer That's and the right. white, white um, uh, recording yeah. uh, industry, That's right. she's, it's about her standing up for yeah, herself. Yeah, and she's negotiating for that space right. throughout the play. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the fact is that they just want her voice. They just want her yeah, singing yes, because yes, there, yes. there is currency there. And that's what the that's white currency. producer is that's after. Right, that's right. That's and right. I, could, I could see similar things where, you you know, yes, there will be uh, great artists that come out. There are. Uh -huh. I mean, the whole um, traditional music and dance mm -hmm. was practiced by people who were outcasts. Like you had the Tawaks, mm -hmm. who were called Notch Girls by mm -hmm. uh, the British. And then you have the Devdasis in the South, who were like married to the god in the temple. Yeah. Uh, but then there was exploitation as there is right, sure. anywhere else sure. in the world. Sure. So there were situations where very, very famous singers were called at a wedding, but they were not invited to the banquet. 
Yeah, you know. Yes, yes. Well, it, it, it's it, it's, it's, it's the same thing it's, here I know, yes. with famous, famous uh, uh, performers: Sammy Davis Jr., Lena Horne, being in uh, Las Vegas mm. headliners, mm -hmm. but not allowed to swim in the swimming pool. That's right. And there was this. Uh, uh, I don't know whether uh, what you. Th in fact, it would be nice to have your opinion on the Green Book. That's a film the I green saw. Book, yes, yeah, yes, where yes. You, you know he's invited uh, to play the piano for right. this white uh, group, but he cannot use the the restroom. He has to use the one. He has to go outside. Uh, he has to go outside. That's right. I remember yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and go down the street. And they actually, if I remember correctly, they arranged it so that it, he could go out. That's right. right. They'd set it up yeah. across the street or yeah. somewhere where you yeah, could yeah. go to the Yeah, yeah, he could go out. It, 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 yeah. It's fabulous that you bring that up because the, the question, regardless of where you are in the world, yeah. is to what degree are, is your full being welcomed? If you're an artist or a singer or if you're a, a, a receptionist, is it like... Just come here and answer the phone. I don't want to hear your views on anything. Just yeah, answer yeah, the just phone. Yeah, just do that. That's just do yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's similar because yeah. traditionally in Indian culture, mm -hmm. if you are a performer, you're immediately outcast. You're removed from the caste system, right? Of course, As things performer, have changed. Yeah, yeah. But, but you, uh, you know, I'm sorry. Finish. I, I just. I, I, it just reminded me of something, uh, the experience I had with you, hmm. where I, I was coming, I didn't, I mean, you were performers, but I, it, it was just, it was us. Mm -hmm. I didn't see any difference, but I was, you were talking about the Audi and the, the person who drove me there, mm -hmm. and I was in rehearsal with you, worried about the guy waiting for that's me. That's right, yeah. And then I was just told, no, that's what he does. Don't worry about it. Don't worry mm -hmm. about it. But I was worried. I cared. I mean... Of course you would worry, yeah, because you treat him the way he deserves to be treated, like a human right. being. You yeah. wouldn't want uh, someone to put you on hold, uh, you, you know, on something, right? No. So the same way you don't want to do the, the same thing. But... Uh, because of the class system, we think that's his job. He's got to wait, right? And you could also argue and say that he's being paid over time. Mm -hmm. But how can we assume that it's only the money that matters? Mm -hmm. Maybe he wants to go home. Mm -hmm. uh, you, know, you know, maybe he wants to have dinner with his wife and kids, mm -hmm. right? We don't know we that. Don't know. We, we can't. We, so, waiters, the people who wait on t yeah. at the tables. You know, it's interesting because it, it, during the COVID time, uh, here, did you you identify people as essential workers? There? That's right. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. essential workers were, uh, you know, were were given certain priorities. They're essential and they're important. Yeah. Now I will say that in in Hoboken, where I live, uh, the liquor stores were considered essential. Essential. <laughs> they were. Same in India. <laughs> yeah. Is that right? Yes, because the government needed the tax money. Oh, it's the tax money. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, uh, but but one of the things that was beautiful about that was that that people recognized people who you don't normally see, like the pe like the people who deliver your food. That's right. Because you yeah. because restaurants were closed, or, or 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 people who do your you know whatever. All of these folks. Were, they were the ones risking mm. during quarantine times, yeah. getting on, on public transportation to come and do your work for you or bring you your food. They were essential workers, Absolutely. but they've always been. Yeah. It was the pandemic that brought out the fact that they are and always have been essential. Yeah. I, I hope we don't lose that sense of... How, Hi, how are you? And how are you? That's really right. That doing? that's an, a human being who is taking the trouble to bring you your food. Yes, that's right. right. That's right. I, I, you're right. I hope we don't forget it, mm -hmm. and I hope we remember that the the people whom we've called low caste and who've been cleaning our 
filth, mm-hmm. uh, for to use a sanitized word, mm-hmm. that they have always been essential workers. Mm-hmm. You know that I hope we we can extend our feeling of uh, gratitude towards uh, nurses and delivery people and Absolutely. you know paramedics and doctors and uh, everyone who uh, the milkman who brought us milk uh, and not to our doorstep. It. There's a reason in the larger scheme of things in the universe there are reasons why we're dealing with what we're dealing with right now and uh and 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 the best thing we could do is remember right Mm. is remember yeah what we learn yeah absolutely and i i think it's very easy to forget uh, because we're so used i mean it's always about privilege is really about convenience Mm -hmm. i mean if you if you're entitled or privileged you you don't Mm -hmm. want to give up that privilege and you don't need to just be grateful for the privilege you have Mm -hmm. and acknowledge the fact that uh, there may be people who deserve the same privileges Mm -hmm. you do but don't Mm -hmm. have it that's right that's right so into the pandemic maybe a few uh, i was three days away Hmm. from starting my first rehearsals on a show i'm going to be doing uh, this year finally but uh, in 2020, I was three days from starting rehearsals when everything was shut down. Ah. So a month after that, I'm thinking to myself, oh my God, what am I going to do? I, I got to do something with this energy, mm. right? And uh, so I, with my friend, uh, Marshall Jones, we started Stream On. Yeah. And Stream On was, uh, uh, it, it, it was about trying to ask other playwrights I know from around the world, how are you dealing with this moment? This, 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 can you, can you write a 10 minute play, 10 minutes only, Mm. about something that is going on right now? It doesn't have to be the pandemic. Yeah. It could be something narrow. It could be whatever it is, but let's document this time we're going through. And I ask you to do that. Yes. You know, you were the first person to reach out during Mm. the pandemic because Mm. I think we were a few months into it, Mm -hmm. into the lockdown. Mm -hmm. And I still remember that conversation we had where you said, what's what's rattling your brains right now? What is it that you see out of your window? And and that's how I wrote Untouchable. uh, Untouchable, yeah. 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 It's brilliant, beautiful. And the actors in it. Yeah, yeah, they're they're wonderful, aren't they? And again, this is the thing, is that those actors are very much in demand. They're Mm -hmm. they're theatre actors, but they are doing a lot of film. Their names again? uh, Roshan and Jim. Yeah, Jim sure. Sarb has done Bollywood cinema uh-huh. and Roshan has done a lot of cinema in mm-hmm. Kerala and uh, they're both wonderful actors yeah. and wonderful human beings mm-hmm. and you know because of the pandemic they were free to do it yes <laughs> you know? yes you that's know? right that's right that's yeah. right absolutely it was it was it was it was really well what happened for me when I start when I went back to Crossroads and I started in the the, the building you're going to be in uh, I did a, a festival mm. because I decided instead of doing plays once a month or whatever, let me combine them twice mm. a year so that we take over the center and do the shows in every every bit uh, of the building. And I wanted to do this play called Freedom Rider, which was about 1960, something that happened in 1961 in the South. And something didn't feel right coming out of the pandemic or Mm. in the middle of the pandemic thinking, oh my God, we're going to be out of this. We're going to be coming out of it. How Mm. do we reemerge? How do we come out of this? And so instead of doing the show about 1961, I moved it and instead wrote a show about now and about coming out of the pandemic. And just like you, because of the pandemic, I was able to use these international singers, um, uh, Sweet Honey and the Rock, and they were a part of the mm-hmm. show, and, and it was great. And one of the pieces that I used, for that I wrote in Stream On, I used in this as well. Oh. Uh, and, and, and that was, was remarkable because it reminded me of that time we were in. Mm. Here's my question, though. How, how are we 
coming out of the pandemic. Can you imagine if you were to write a piece right now about coming out of it? I had asked you about what rattles your brain in the beginning of it. <laughs> now what's rattling Now my what? Brain? Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I think I have written a sequel to Dance Like a Man and it's sort of in process. So it mm -hmm. is developing over mm -hmm. this hopefully post pandemic uh, uh, situation mm -hmm. now. And the post pandemic is feeding this idea. Yeah, it, it is uh -huh. because it's uh, it's still about um, a containment, uh, like they're not moving out. It's an estate. Mm -hmm. It's a dance institution where yes, where yes. they live, and uh, there's very little interaction with the outside world. But in the climax, there is an interaction with the outside world, and it's very ugly. Uh, and it sort of changes things uh -huh. for for the future, oh. and um, I don't know. Are I don't mean to be very uh, dark about yeah. it, but that's the way it came out. I, I. But do you feel that that is when you say it changes something hmm. for the future? Are you suggesting that the future is then better because of the change? Are you? Or you maybe don't know. Uh, uh, well, I don't know. It could it could be for the worse, uh, uh -huh. and I think it is reflective of uh, the current situation where, uh, post pandemic, we've had farmers protesting for a year mm -hmm. in the streets of Delhi. Mm -hmm. Right now, there's this. It, it took the government a year to repeal the laws that they were fighting against. Mm -hmm. Right now, I know. I should give them the benefit of the doubt. Maybe the government is, has good intentions that the laws were there to protect or I don't know. But the farmers didn't think so. Right. Who would know better, a politician or a farmer as mm -hmm. to what's good for a farmer? Mm -hmm. Simple question. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. I wish it had been addressed, uh, you know, one year ago. Mm -hmm. People have lost their lives. Families have been living on the streets and these are wealthy farmers. You, you know, with farms and, you know, they have fields to, uh, you know, to uh, uh, to uh, harvest or to sow and, you, you know, they have a whole cycle which they used to, a way of life which they had to put on hold to protest, right? Now, what turned out for a year was quite ugly, uh, right? They, 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 they were hosed down and they were beaten up mm. and they were run down there was one minister's son uh, allegedly of course it was never proved it was him although there, there is video footage who actually ran down a group uh, of farmers and killed them right so there are these very ugly interactions uh, that are happening and protests uh, that were put on hold because of the pandemic and the pandemic was used as an excuse. And now there are questions being asked whether human rights are coming in the way of fighting terrorism, which means that the planting the idea that we should take away human rights so that we could deal with this phantom of terrorism. Don't ask me. Okay, <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't make that, but it's, uh, yeah, it is a bit of... Uh... Well, I mean, it, it certainly happened in this country, mm -hmm. in the United States, after 9-11, mm -hmm. to anybody who looked Muslim. Right, but it wasn't a law, it wasn't codified, no. but it was But it, a, a But there were laws that, right? that's true, mm -hmm. there were laws that allowed uh, the state, if you will, to... Uh, to interrogate however they wanted. Right. And for whatever reason. So one reason being you look a certain way. Mm. That gives you the right to do something. So you're right, it's not a law. Mm. But but does humanity have what it takes to always interpret laws the right way? It doesn't. Yeah. You're right. Hmm. But what happens if the law is interpreted, is, is wrong? Then and that's no, what you're saying yeah, here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And finally they repealed it. It took a year. Huh? That's right. Yeah, it took yeah, a year. So and it's only repealed. I, I don't know. They have to wipe it out of the, uh, the parliament, whatever, the papers that were approved in the first place. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
right? So it's it's like the word secular has been removed from our constitution. Hmm. You know, like we're no longer a secular country yeah. because we're run by a, a, a party that's very fundamentalist. Well, it's happening in this country too. Mm. In a country steeped in, in democracy and the ideals of democracy is now being driven in many ways by a far right mm. that is is uh, that uh, has a disdain for the secular just does not mm. uh, you know does not it, it, it's fundamentalist it's what one person says yeah is the way it is uh, it, it's 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 a tough situation all over the world is what I'm saying Right. All over the world, something yeah. is happening. Yeah, something is happening, and I, uh, uh, to our conversation, it's up to us to document it. Which brings us to your first question: How are we responding to yes, to how these are we things? Yeah. And yeah. I love that you. So your your part of your answer dealt with farmers, mm -hmm. and what I think is fascinating, and I don't think is. I don't see um, destruction, let's say, as necessarily dark. Mm -hmm. Sometimes things have to be destroyed in order to grow new That's a very crops. Hindu concept. Mm. That Shiva's dance of destruction yeah. is for the bad to, to be consumed so that the good can, can survive. Yes, yeah, yeah. And, and um, the, the lily that comes out of... Uh, Ugliness, the, yes, right. yes, the muck. Yeah, yeah, yeah the yeah, muck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So I love now the we fact are Buddhist. That's <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, now that but 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 it, I love the fact that you uh, you bring up the farmers because isn't that the very the, the whole idea of needing to dig up and resoil and regrow in order to regrow and right in order to pr it, it, it's in a very weird way, our, our soil needs to be turned. That's right. That's a great, great metaphor yeah. for yeah. <laughs> and uh, they yeah, yeah. they're not turning the soil because. Uh, well, you, that's you, what you, we have to do. Yeah. Yeah. That's what we as artists, right? Right. I mean, we're yeah. in every way turning. Yeah. I turn the soil by 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 simply not telling people this is what you should do no. or even presenting a solution no. which is provoking the quest the, the, yeah. the, the response absolutely to the question. yeah so we are farmers of the soul we right? are we are <laughs> and, and we're we're churning that stuff too huh? <laughs> yeah. i love it i, I love, love it, it too and like all farmers we are vulnerable to seasonal changes yes, and sometimes yes. it's for the better yes, sometimes yes. for the worse well hey let's I toast think, yes absolutely the new crop Yes, the new crop. All right. <laughs> to riper harvests. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Beautiful. And to TCAA yes. for this wonderful opportunity for us to have this conversation. Absolutely. So here's to you, Ramanjit, Abanti, Divya. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers, sir. <laughs> All right. I'd love some more coffee. So I guess we I'm on TV. How am I going to You're well, saying we, I'm an essential worker. <laughs> we're, we're essential to each other. Yes, we you are. Know, so we are essential workers. I am so, essential to him because he needs more coffee. <laughs> right now, you're my essential worker. After a while, I'll be your essential. Yes. That, that's, that's what <laughs> we take turns. Well, <laughs> here, here's a moment here where I would say, uh, you know, Ricardo had shared uh, three, four pictures with us, and you had a two-minute clipping. Uh, before you wind up the conversation completely, would you like to share those? I don't want you to forget to share those. Yeah, ones. but you you know, the way this conversation has gone, I mm -hmm. think it's far more interesting than those yes. uh, clips that I sent you, because that's mm -hmm. that's more like a, a show reel of little you know, different snippets from my plays and things. Uh, I think... Why uh, this... not? Because it's almost like, a, uh, you know, sharing with the audience also like a peep into your work, a visual peep. We've okay. had a lot of uh, glimpses or peeping into your thoughts and looking into your minds and how you're feeling right now, Ricardo. 
a very beautifully shared it in a very healing kind of manner when you see the energy and the vibes of the theater and how he's pining for that live energy but also if we could maybe have a visual shape to it if sure okay i don't mind is this is something you would put in post editing is that uh, yeah is that uh, no this is when uh, ramanjit uh, abanti had sent that mail to us saying we need some yeah. footage but i mean what are you going to do with it if we send it it's going to you're going to edit oh, it you you had already sent us uh, ricardo for pictures if we could share that with our oh, audience yes i did yes i did that's right yeah that's so, so that's like a visual uh, glimpse yeah. that an audience will get our audience absolutely will get. Okay, so good. i think in the end yeah they're editing it it's oh yes yes okay that's it so so yeah. you do it in post that's great that's right okay yeah. no no we won't do it in post we're going to show it now oh okay but oh. is this live or is it a record audience we're is still live <laughs> We're so, oh us. God! I didn't. People are watching. People are watching. Yes. Oh no, no. <laughs> There are only four people. That's us. That's well, it. Well, uh, no, that, that's not us because I'm not watching and you're not watching. So there've been people coming and going, and there are quite a few comments. Okay. Uh -huh. Okay. We'll see good. the total views once we wind up. This, this oh, I see. Oh, so, yeah. are there any comments you could share with us now? So maybe we could respond. Yes, I'll ask the. team uh, to give me the um, you know comments in the chat give me one minute but before that apanti will share the pictures and if you all could share uh, something about it okay so we can talk while we see it right so that yes. yeah okay so apanti over to you you could share ricardo's pictures first and then mahesh's recording okay Um, okay. This yes. Is, which is so that is uh, that's my theater, Crossroads. Right. And actually, that was from uh, 1995. They did a docum public TV did a documentary on Crossroads, oh. and they called it the story of a theater. And you could see on the right hand side above that was the first built. That was when we first moved into an old abandoned sewing factory, and that's uh -huh. where we started. and the one on the left the building is was our new building right which i've seen yes you've seen yeah. that and then uh the there's a picture below of women drumming mm -hmm. and that's actually a it's called Sheila's Day which was a play about South Africa and the United States and these mm -hmm. women told the story of the role that women played in the anti apartheid movement and the civil rights movement is in, 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 as, yeah. as parallel and what what's really interesting about that is Sheila's day is that it, it was right around when Serafina was on Broadway mm -hmm. uh and all of these shows were coming in from South Africa and they were big hits and we were amazed by that and i wanted to do more and more south african work too but the the writers of Serafina and them they were saying but we want to do more about the US. Mm. So I wanted to learn more about Africa and South Africa specifically and they wanted to learn more about the United States. So That's, in workshop yeah. we developed this piece where half of the cast was from South Africa oh. and half of the cast was from the US and Wonderful. we learned so much during rehearsal oh. about each other. Oh, we should do one between India and the US. We were talking yeah. yeah. we were talking about yeah, yeah. that. Yeah, let's let's, let's uh, take it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah okay. I, I'd yeah. like to talk yes. a little bit more about okay, that. Okay, we should yeah. do that. Yeah, we should, yeah, we should yeah. do that. <laughs> so that's what that uh, uh photo is about and then mm. there are some others I think you may have but uh let's see. What's that? Uh, that is um it looks like uh it, it looks that looked like a black screen with three ghosts ah yes okay that makes sense now like <laughs> that's oh. that's uh, the new innovative technology yeah. what was it so new innovative <laughs> technological zoom theater <laughs> doing it oh, yeah doing its own dramatic moments Yeah. Oh gosh. Oh yes, you talked uh, you, this is the play you you wrote about the World War 2. Uh, That's right. Yeah, yeah. The, these were the uh, the play about the Tuskegee Airmen. 
this is so powerful yeah. i just love their line of vision you could you could get the sense of height well right when i first did it mm -hmm. I decided to do the, it, it, it takes place in Alabama, it takes place on trains, mm. it takes place in Europe, and mm. it takes on the base there, and Italy, and then it takes place in the sky, 20,000 mm. feet up. Oh, so wow. I decided all I wanted was chairs. Right. So with six, with six actors, we had six chairs and six uh, bunks, mm -hmm. uh, uh, and... Uh, And so this particular scene, they're 20,000 feet up in the air mm. in, in individual planes uh, uh, protecting bombers in, mm. a, in, a, in a raid during World War II. Yeah. yeah, I could tell they're really good actors and just, yeah. just the way you position them. It was fun. It was, yeah, in, it was sure. really, really enjoyable. Oh, wow, this is quite an interesting This is a banner. We, had, we did a big banner in uh, 2009 hmm. to commemorate our tw 30, 20 years. Hmm. Uh, uh, and, and it kind of did a collage of all of the folks. You see in the middle there, there's Ruby D and Ossie Davis. Mm -hmm. There's uh, Glenn Turman. It, it is a bunch of, some are people who are very famous and some are people who are, are just coming up new. Mm -hmm. uh, but it kind of represents the spirit of the live uh, performance that, mm -hmm. that Crossroads represented the passion. Years. Yeah, 2008 yeah. was your 30th. Oh, 30. Year, okay, right? thank you. So that's yeah. 30. And um, yeah, in my 20th year is when I had to get glasses mm -hmm. so I could read it right. And then in my 40th year, I pretended I don't read. <laughs> <laughs> but no, this is. Um, but it definitely, I don't think there is such a thing as real theater without passion true and we were talking about how sometimes they don't want your passion they just want a certain thing from mm -hmm. you yeah. crossroads is about passion but crossroads is also about as its name implies the coming together mm. of people from different backgrounds it's a lovely name yeah, yeah. so when we were talking about indian artists working with african-american artists It was really, a, it, to me, it's about help, a, a journey like that helps my, me redefine who I am mm. in global terms. That's what we are all yearning for. We all came from one place. We all yearn for the yeah. connection back. Right. And, and that is about our passion and it is about our spirit. And, yeah. and anyway, that, that represents 30 years of Crossroads. But it, it, but what the crossroads is really about is mm. the connection right. of people who are different from each other. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. I think it's very powerful. The uh, the name yeah. crossroads. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, that that that's crossroads, and now we're back to the to the other, mm. and uh, uh, and we're working on new pieces now. Good. In, in fact, in 1961. Uh, this this piece I'm doing about the Freedom Riders mm. of World War II was about college students who, ah. who decided to give up their summer vacations mm. to get on buses, to board buses, and travel south to help desegregate the South. And they, Oh my God, yeah. that would make a brilliant play. It would, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and that's, so that's coming up. That's coming oh, up. Wonderful. This, by the way, is yeah. is um, this is fly also, mm. but you see the, the 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 you don't have to go back. But the slide before was about the guys, mm. and they were they were they were in the army. They were young, right? So they couldn't say whatever they wanted to say. They couldn't fee They couldn't express their feelings. Uh. But they were young. And they have feelings. They, some are, are exuberance and some are anger. Mm. But they were also black, so they couldn't do that without, you know, uh, jeopardizing the reason that they're there, which is to be a positive role model, not right. negative. So how do you tell that part of the story about them oh. in terms of their emotion that I can't show through words? Oh so I God. used a tap dancer. 
You see, and so this tap dancer, I call the tap griot, he, in tap and in dance, without words, mm. tells the story of their lives mm. at that time that they cannot tell in words. And that's, oh that's what this is. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, you talk about technology, that mm. those, those, uh, projections yeah but that see that is great use of technology if we could see that again yeah, because that, it that, doesn't take away from picture. the performer from the artist that's right there's very much in the focus but it's so that, supportive and yes. you just look at those clouds and those fragments and they say something i just wanted the audience to feel like they were flying too mm. like they were flying too. right and uh, so, yeah, so the, so the projections design mm. for that particular show right. has one, two, three, four, five, five different projection screens, oh. all different, that the designer manipulates. And, uh, and, and sometimes they're still images, sometimes they're moving. Mm. In that case, the, the clouds are actually moving. Right. Uh, but sometimes... Uh, that's actually interesting because this particular part is a fantasy that he's having, mm. which is why, even though it's 1940s, this is in color. Uh, the other projections were all in black, black and, and white. white. Yeah, as, as uh, they were going through what they were going through. But the projections, mm. when I use them the most, they're used to evoke a, a certain emotional right feeling. yeah i mean suddenly to burst in color yes it yes, suggests yes. something and if it's a dream and a fantasy uh -huh. yeah, yeah. And, and sometimes projections are used to just tell us where you are so it's a right. realistic okay now you're in a house this is the picture of, i i am not uh, I I no I, that doesn't do anything to me <laughs> it doesn't it doesn't uh, but uh, but but uh, projections, I guess, as an as a career started that yeah. way, maybe, and then and then the, the the most exciting projections, like you say, they start with your feelings, your emotions. They evoke, yeah. they pull it, and um, and and that's used a lot. And it, and by the way, it's a whole new industry mm, that yes. a lot of people who are technically inclined and yeah, young people just especially they could do for that. the theater just yeah. for the theater yeah, yeah yeah i i used a video designer who did stuff on broadway for choke in bali when i directed yeah. at columbia uh -huh. Uh -huh. Oh, and wow. we used two projectors uh, yes, to yes. get extreme close-up of hair because the play yes. is about a widow yeah. and who was shaved oh wow uh, yeah and so the there hair. was all That's that excellent. hair falling off and That's stuff. beautiful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, technology is and it has been a part of theater for a long time. It has, yeah, 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 yeah absolutely. Yeah. And yeah. it will continue to be. Uh, it will, yeah. it will. Yeah. So, yeah, so that's, those, those are my shots. Did you have clips? I had clips, yes. but they're not as interesting as yours. Um, <laughs> but your clips yeah. Yes, Avanti's going to share that clip just now. <laughs> okay. That was just amazing, Ricardo. Yeah, oh, thank you. Uh, yeah, yeah, and especially that production of Fly was just yeah. amazing. Yeah, there are two productions being done now. Uh huh. One Is there one running? Albany in next month, I think. Albany, New York, and okay. there's one in New Orleans. Ah. So I don't direct them anymore. Right, because other people are other people do yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It, that's that's what's good about uh, being a writer is that other people interpret they your get work to interpret and, yeah, it yeah. and you know I'm trying to also find some things for myself like that tap griot is a tap dancer uh -huh. telling the story that can't be told in words the next show that I did mm. um, uh, satchel page in the Kansas City swing mm. I actually used a character called the jazz man and mm -hmm. all he does is he plays his saxophone oh. and he walks through uh -huh. like, like a spirit right uh, through this oh and so i'm learning and trying to find things right. in, in my writing yeah. like that yeah because you you have a great sensibility because you're a man of the theater right very much like shakespeare mm -hmm. was he mm -hmm. understood yeah. what worked the mechanics uh, yeah and now as a writer you can use them to tell your story, like just the, right. the thought of having this jazz player 
That's right. And move in and out of it. Uh, and being aware that I don't have all the answers and uh, let's try it. Mm. Let's just try it. And yeah. See, you know, so you got something there. Yeah, that's, I think, the show reel or what, what I mean. it's just... <laughs> मुझे पता नहीं मैं कहा से शुरुआत करूं। दिस इज तुमने हमेशा मुझे पहला फुसला कर चुप कराया और इसी तरह हाँ तुम्हें याद है मुझे आलू पराठे बहुत पसंद है क्योंकि जब भी मैं तुम्हारे पास रोते हुए चोट खाए आती वो ही तो मिलता मुझे दीपक अगर वो आदमी मेरे कमरे में आ गया मैं उसको कुछ भी करने देती मैं आ गया हूँ मैं संभाल लूंगा सभी पापा के सामने तो बोल रही थी तुम उससे बहुत प्यार करती हो अब दिखाओ ना अब दिखाओ कितना प्यार करती हूँ इसका मतलब पता है क्या इसका मतलब है तुम्हारे मामा तुमसे बहुत प्यार करते हैं तेरह साल की कच्ची कली रंडी बन गई Love the image. Love your image. Okay, guys. So, so, so. I love it. Shit, you washed away. Fifty thousand. Come on, come on. Come on, come on. Come on, come on. <laughs> but I, I think your uh, pictures were so strong and so no. beautiful. You know. I love that. Yeah, this. I want to. I want to know what happens next. <laughs> oh, that's man. good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was beautiful. That was beautiful. I think we saw a couple. Mahesh, of them. I'm. Ah. I'm so glad that we watched these. Uh, you know three glimpses i had not watched the reel earlier when you sent uh-huh. it to me i must confess i just watched it just now and those were three very strategically important plays of yours one was morning raga and 30 days in september which is really yeah. and then we had the big fat city uh, yeah you shared something about them yeah yeah well uh, morning raga was uh, was a film uh the very it's the second film that i wrote and directed and uh, again uh, it it was um, you know the hardest thing is to believe in your story is one thing but to get others to believe in it is a, another thing and i have shabana to thank because uh, when she read the play uh, she fell in love with the with the character and she agreed to do it and then things uh worked for me because i had her on board so and of course the producers were also uh, very open to doing something new uh, the producers have a background of very popular uh, highly successful telugu cinema mm-hmm. <coughs> excuse yeah. me 30 days in september was written in 2003 i think uh, commissioned by uh a group in delhi uh who um where um uh, they, they they were sort of uh, offering counseling services and therapy for survivors of uh, abuse in childhood and they approached me and said would you like to write a play about uh, the subject and i immediately said yes 
uh, and it was very wonderful because I had the resources. There were eight very courageous, uh, all women uh, who uh, shared their stories and uh, 30 Days in September is actually a collection of very true stories of uh, abuse at childhood and different ways that they cope with uh, abuse in uh, adulthood because the scars never really leave you I believe that it uh, it stays um, but it's you know where do you find ways of uh, of um, starting the process of healing and getting on with your with your life mm -hmm. so that was a very important play for me personally I think I uh, I put in a lot. It took me two years to write the play, mm. and uh, that that was wow. uh, yeah. And a lot of people identify with that play. Mm -hmm. And I remember Nandita Das, who was this very famous mm -hmm. activist and uh, actor in India. She mm -hmm. said that uh, there's not a single woman in India who hasn't faced abuse at mm -hmm. some degree or another mm, mm. and I think that's true of men too mm, mm, so uh, mm -hmm. wherever there is an adult and a child mm. there is scope for abuse mm, mm, mm. and um, of course in uh, traditional societies these things are not talked about because usually the abuser is a family yeah. person someone mm. in the family yeah. and so this play and of course the good work that uh, the organization is doing has brought in some awareness mm -hmm. on on the subject and that you know how wrong it is yeah, yeah. and how there has to be some kind of action against uh, against uh, you know the the accessibility yes. uh, to uh, to uh, to children sure uh, yeah. and the resultant but it starts by being 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 able to talk about it right to tell the story yeah 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 so talking about responding to what's happening I, mm. I think you're spot on when mm. you say that artists are you know compelled to respond to what's happening yes, yeah, yes. around you and within you as well so it it really depends on uh, and equipped to we're equipped yeah. to, everybody's equipped in different ways yeah to respond to w w what's going on. And, Absolutely, yeah. yeah. As artists, as human beings in mm -hmm. general, mm -hmm. we all, you know, have different ways of, we have equipment, maybe not everything, but mm -hmm. we are equipped in some way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There you go. Great, uh, and, and the I'm, Big Fat City was, of course, I, when I moved to Bombay within three, four years, it was a response to my, an outsider's perspective yes, of yes. the city and its shenanigans and the hypocrisy and mm. everything <laughs> that uh, a city sort of uh, sometimes celebrates and sometimes hides. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> well, I want to uh, ask your response to some food we have in Hoboken here, but I can't until we go. Okay, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> he mentioned yeah, that's, that's yeah. the word. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think today's conversation um, really took some very interesting and significant directions. And that was the beauty of today's conversation. It was from the heart in terms of what we're really thinking and how our mind is ticking. And uh, Mahesh, by the way, we had quite a few people. We had Madhulika Bali, ex-principal, joining us from somewhere in Punjab. Nina Singh, uh, mm -hmm. chairperson of Akshar School. Raju Raman, the program director, uh, consultant, program consultant at Victoria Memorial. We had One. quite women actors from the group. Some of them you've been teaching. Uh, who joined in and uh, so yeah quite a, we had um, Nandita Puri from Mumbai joining in I oh. so when I was this were only the movie when I was watching what's happening I was watching all the time so yeah we had people coming in joining and of course these are long conversations so they come they listen for some time right and, yeah we've been at it for over two and a half hours yeah I know yeah. <laughs> But uh, it was quite a canvas that both of you covered. So thank you so much. Yeah. And yet, I, I still, 
Thank you, Ramanjit, because it's the space that you created. It's mm -hmm. it's very much like the space that Rick creates at Crossroads. You've created this virtual space because if we were by ourselves, I don't think we would have had such an in-depth conversation. No. We would have moved to food right away. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to know what are you all eating for the breakfast or brunch now, as we call it. Yeah, it's, well, it's lunchtime now. It's, it's so. brunch. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. So do you want to get so, them a what, what do we have? What do we have? Well, um, because, it, it, let me see, in Hoboken, we probably will go... You're talking about to eat today, yeah. but we're going we're going out to eat. Yes, lovely. So Excellent. what I, I I don't exactly know. The one thing I do promise is that what we eat will be on the menu. <laughs> <laughs> so Mahesh, eat a bite for me, or uh, do one cheers for me. Yes, I'll send you a picture. Oh, that would be lovely, and we can put it. <laughs> or I'll leave it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> This is like post art alive discussion kind of. Yes. Thing. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank, thank you, you so very much for uh, this um, uh, quite a stimulating conversation. I think I'm myself going to revisit it and have a look for various reasons, but right. it still leaves me hungry to delve deeper into both your works with more visuals and images. And you never know, we might just end up doing that. Again, we can think about it. All of us can think about it and yeah, do absolutely. a complete visual, uh, you know, kind of sharing of our works. Your right. works. Yeah. Well, you want the visual of, let me see. Yes, I, sure. Them, uh, I have to mute me for a second so that right. you don't see this. No, why okay. not? Even the sound is well, it's just uh, uh, the blinds going up. But uh, be prepared. Okay. Interesting oh, sounds. <laughs> Yes, it's just. This oh, this is a beautiful view. Oh, this is, yeah. Wow. <laughs> so that's where we are. That is quite and sunny. The Hudson River. Mm. There is the, the hills. So, and this is. <laughs> this is me. Yeah. <laughs> later. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh, and you should see the pictures he has. There's one with Gregory Hines somewhere. I don't know. Oh, where. let's see them. Oh, right. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. his house. The purpose yeah. of doing it technologically, yeah. peeping into yeah. someone's house. Yeah, yeah. Let's have a look, Rick. What's that? Oh, no, those pictures he's talking about are in my office. Right. Which is a couple blocks away. Mm -hmm. They used to be here. They used and to then be I here. Moved. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> Lovely. But thank you so much. Have a wonderful afternoon. Enjoy yourselves. And we'll mm -hmm. touch base again. All yes. right. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you, Mahesh. Thank you, Rick, Bye. for joining Thanks. us. Bye. Thank Bye, Abhanti. Bye. 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 Well, that was our conversation with Mahesh Dattani and Ricardo Khan, who were joining us from New York. Mahesh is traveling to New York to do a couple of productions right now. And we thought it would be lovely if they were together in that space. We will be having Arts Alive series continuously now. We met you today after a gap. So stay tuned in for uh, more artists and conversations with them and uh, you know, having a look at their whole body of work, the journeys and the thoughts and the processes that they use to create um, that work. So looking forward to seeing you all again at our episode seven of Arts Alive, which we'll be announcing soon. And we are looking forward to starting our Australian chapter of Arts Alive very, very soon with our co-partner, from there who we will announce um, at the earliest. Uh, good night, take care and a very good morning and afternoon to the people who are joining us from the West. Uh, take care of yourself. There's another um, news of 
COVID variant and so many, I mean, people over here are getting sick with dengue. So just take care of yourselves. Don't take unnecessary risks. Stay healthy. Keep smiling. Keep shining. Lots of love. Bye-bye.